Hello, everybody, and Hello. welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing today? Great to see you all in here. So many amazing faces, so many amazing creators and people. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure to have you all. Is it Monday already? It is. I don't believe <laughs> it, but it is. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. It, it, it's like the weekend just passed in a blur, and it's like, always, yeah. oh, I'm going to take this weekend. You know, I'm going to get a little more rest, get a little more into it. And here we are Monday, and... Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and, uh, and I wanted to say uh, congratulations on Family Day for those of you that are in Canada celebrating. Yes. And President's Day uh, in U.S. as well, guys. Uh, so okay. most of you probably are well rested uh, <laughs> as you had a day off, hopefully. We didn't get it here in Quebec, of course. We didn't get it, uh, yeah. yeah. It's only Quebec and Newfoundland. There, there, there's different names, like in uh, Manitoba, it's Louis Real Day. Yeah. But yeah, I can't uh, come back and on and Newfoundland. We did not get any, so it was just another yeah. day at the at the salt yard. But that's so. okay. That's okay. Yes. We did. We get plenty of days off. Uh, we're just happy that you guys hopefully got some well deserved rest today. And uh, well, thank you for choosing us for your evening pastime. Most definitely. Or maybe you're already on Tuesday, so that's your morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good Hope you're morning. off to a great day. <laughs> yes, uh, today we're going to have amazing guests, guys. Uh, uh, if you're here for the interview, you are not going to be disappointed. Uh, we uh, have a couple uh, visiting us today. Uh, Li Eliza Quinn and her husband, uh, who has a channel, uh, Gentleman Wake, uh, Omar Chavez Jr. Uh, she is a Cuban American singer and actress, very uh, well known uh, uh, in her realm of music business, and he's a filmmaker, uh, very well known as well, award winning filmmaker, and and as a bonus, he collects uh, playing cards. That's right. It's such an interesting yes. niche. It really is. Uh, that's the amazing thing about YouTube. And once again, something that just never even thought of existed on here. That's and right. It is, a niche. it is seen. It's known. It is traveled by people. That's what's so cool about it. That's so. right. And guys, you know, we always say that you guys are here equally contributing to the quality and content of this uh, show. Well, today is a, a great a testament to that. Uh, this interview is uh, brought to you and possible made by uh, Karen Somers. That's right. Uh, she yep. was the mastermind behind uh, the idea of having these amazing uh, people on tonight so thank you so much and a shout out to Karen Somers who also is an uh, inspiration for our European shout outs yes <laughs> thank you so so much for uh, helping us with yeah. this amazing idea uh, once again you just knocked it right out of the park yes. so uh, so much love to you Karen and and thank you for all your support to us uh, You've been absolutely nothing. Uh, and there she is in a chat. Yes, she <laughs> said, I see your writing to the end. I made it. I made it. So it's so great that you could join us tonight. So that's uh, right. And she's joining from Netherlands. So yeah. it's uh, quite late. Yes. <laughs> quite late there. Hats off to you for that. Thank you so very much. To each and every one of you through the billion plus channels on YouTube, all that life can throw can throw at you. And you chose to spend some time here tonight with us and our amazing guests. 
We truly do appreciate it. Thank you so much for choosing uh, Pusha Studios interviews. That's right. And we are new here. Uh, please, uh, a reminder for you, uh, if you can hit that subscribe button, we would really appreciate it. And uh, please do hit uh, the bell and hope the notifications uh, ring in your area as well. <laughs> That's right, guys. That's right. Hope you can tweet it out. Yes. Hope you can put it on Facebook, wherever you got an outlet. And get all those people in to see our amazing guest tonight. It's truly, truly appreciated. Susanna, hello from Belgium. Oh, I love Belgium. Great to have you in here. Such mm, a pleasure. Belgium waffle. Yes. I, I was there a couple more days, and I would have had to be like free willy coming home. <laughs> because, <laughs> man, those those waffles and that melted Nutella on the side. Oh, my God. And Brussels. I just can't say enough good things about it. Yes, so. that's right. <laughs> Um, well, uh, and, uh, uh, well, who are we here? Maybe a bit reminder for those of you that are new. Uh, sure. Okay. I uh, caught me on the spot with that one, but that's the way Xenia likes to do things. Yeah. Uh, we're a husband and wife team from Montreal. Xenia is originally from Latvia. I grew up in Quebec my whole life, rural Quebec, then moved to Montreal for my adult years. We do videography and photography here under the name Pusha Studios. And now we've become more of live streamers than anything. It's six nights a week. You can find the whole schedule for everything that we do. Just visit our About section of our channel. It is all listed there. We have interviews three nights a week. Tech Talk Tuesday. I seen somebody had asked a question. I crazy, I believe. That would be an awesome question for tomorrow night, actually, to get into. So I hope you can make it then, where we spend three hours just discussing everything YouTube. It's an open forum. And as you see, you all have blue wrenches. It is not a status here. But a symbol that we are all equal. So whether you have two subscribers or two million, we're all in it together, folks. So it's great, a pleasure to have you there. And the same with the Tech Talk Tuesdays, like that as well. We also do yes shoutouts uh, twice a week. We do Sunday night and Thursday afternoon, and that's a great time to get your channel notice <laughs> and that's right and you're more than welcome to network here but please uh, uh, ju uh just respect uh, our uh, guests uh, yes. for tonight it is an interview night uh, so if you decide to follow somebody leave a comment on their video and let's leave it in the uh, uh, backgrounds of the chat uh, and leave the chat for the questions and conversations around our guests that's right uh, what is it we uh oh sorry what is it we're in it together? Well, yeah. we are here to connect uh, creators, YouTubers, and human beings, after all, uh, helping uh, to inspire with interviews and motivate, of course, uh, with different creators and celebrities all across the board. And, of course, our Tuesday Tech Talks are here as well, where we share our knowledge and skills, and you guys share yours. Uh, we're in it together there as well. And shout outs, uh, shout out game nights where we uh, are in it to win it, uh, oh. to grow uh, our channels as well together. Uh, we didn't come up with this uh, expression. One of our viewers actually did. Uh, yes. uh, Philip Cochran, we're in it together. That's right. <laughs> no, that's and we love it. Uh, crew for life as well. Uh, the technical stuff would be a lot better suited for tomorrow night. I hope you can... Uh, Join us that we can get away more into detail and stuff like that. And once again, we are not experts on cameras and that as well. We don't uh, claim to be. We can give you some advice and maybe some people in the chat as well. Then we'll be able to give you some help as too. So it's a great place for uh, those kind of questions. I hope you can bring them. Thank you guys so much. We are climbing, guys, and I hope you can keep it climbing. Don't forget to tweet it out. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget, if you're new here, to hit the subscribe and see all that we do, including our amazing guest tonight, guys. You are not going to be disappointed. Uh, she has sang with Ricky Martin. I mean, uh, Gloria Estefan collaborated with. I mean, it's unbelievable the talent that we are lucky enough to have the chance to talk to. Yes. And tonight is by far no exception. And her husband, I mean, fan. Guys, you want to uh, see great uh, tips on, mo on video making that? Tonight, his shorts are unbelievable. I mean, this guy is a pro and then some. We were watching somebody's work and we were just blown away. Yeah, there are cinema level uh, shorts that we're doing as well. And uh, he has a degree in uh, uh, screenwriting, uh, storytelling, so to say. Yes. Uh, <laughs> cinematics. Uh, so definitely pro tips there. And of course, the interesting question of how it is to transition from the big screen or big stage yes. uh, to a YouTube platform. Definitely. Uh, we had a couple of guests before that has made this transition as well. So it's always interesting to see. Uh, you know the story behind it and uh, how does it feel like being on this side <laughs> uh, how does it work and does it work the same way definitely uh, so lots of questions lots of uh, 
uh, amazing uh, things to discuss uh, with them. But uh, well, before that, uh, we're definitely going to be doing a roll call shout out for you guys. And of course, uh, our hashtag Blue Ranch group. Uh, don't forget about the selfies. Hashtag Blue Ranch group on Twitter. We'll shout you out. But right now we can't. We usually don't ever play videos, uh, the audio on here. But we can play a little snippet because this is copyright free. We just can do a little tiny bit though. But just to give you a, t uh, and that's not the audio I was talking about. I gotta turn off my phone. So there you go. That'll be Those a great. Those of you that were here yesterday remember yes, well what right. it means. <laughs> that's right. Ah, okay. There, that's all done. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, here's a little snippet, guys. Let me just first uh, make sure I have the audio off here. Uh, studio mode, Bowser, uh, Bowser. <laughs> I got the Bowser in my head tonight. Uh, okay, studio mode. There we go, guys. Ooh, through the years, we all will be together. If the There's just a little taste, guys. Yeah, that's her and her niece, niece uh, so Nina so Simone Diaz. Yes. Uh, also beautiful voice. Uh, but that's our guest for tonight, yeah. guys. Mm. <laughs> and yes, that's what everybody's saying. They're both, like, that's her niece uh, and, and herself and her husband. Both very, very, I would say very good looking people is an understatement. But also very funny, very down to earth. I mean, they are really are the whole package. That's why it's going to be such a great That's interview. That's right. Yeah. And their channel is about comedy and humor. Yes. So although their uh, business side might be on a serious side more and more uh, entrepreneurial, uh, especially her channel, yes. is more about uh, comedy and skits. And they both are working on uh, it together. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And a, a lot of things that you can just binge watch uh, for the whole evening. Well, at least that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was good. It was yeah. good. Yeah. And then I was showing some friends and that and was just agreeing like, wow, this is this is awesome. You know? Yeah. It's so it. who's excited? Hot says, well, we are yes. excited as well and hope you are guys as well. Uh, hello, everybody just joining us as well. Terrell, thank you so much as always. Uh, people, uh, t especially tonight, because it's an interview, like Xenia said, looking for uh, if you want to meet up with somebody, check out their channel. That it's fine within reason, but we got to keep it very respectful for the guest tonight. So keep it very on the down low. And as a side note, never, ever, ever ask for support ever. That's one thing we don't do in here. Uh, that and not only will it get you, um, uh, uh removed uh, comments removed eventually timed out and it gets too bad banned that'll be people in the chat doing it it is a golden rule here it's a great way not to get noticed even on shout out nights and that so i just wanted to give that as a side note and uh, uh karen summer says i stumbled on her channel by cheer accident but i love it from the first minute yes it's it's just so much fun oh yeah it, it, it's got lots of laughs into it and stuff like that i love the the, the like doesn't take ourselves too serious, but very well done. Yes. That it's got a great production quality too. Of so. course, of course. And yes. they both do editing, I must yes. say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to make sure, especially in the last couple of videos, to say that. <laughs> and this is their Instagram, by the way, guys, as well. Yes, it's a collaborative project. And I must say, I think it was inspired by Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes. Uh, where uh, uh, they both uh, collabed into the... Uh, basically letters to my ex, uh, a little video, and of course a photo series uh, devoted uh, to uh, saying goodbye to your exes. That's right. Yep. Beautiful, and, and beautiful uh, work. Everything they do is very, very well done, very professional, and it's not surprising by the talent in them that is done that way. 
So <laughs> definitely <laughs> lots uh, to get inspired by, and let lots to learn, and I'm sure there's gonna be lots of laugh and and, and fun yes. tonight as well. So I hope you guys are ready. Uh, for that, we're going to uh, join, well, they're going to join us just in a couple of minutes. And before that, we're going to, of course, do a roll call, as we always do. That's right, uh, guys. Shouting each and every one of you out and saying hello to you for joining us tonight. Uh, please like and share. And if you can uh, tell it to your best friend uh, yes. that tonight is the night uh, for a great entertainment, uh, we would appreciate that as well. Uh, thank you so much. Mr. Funniness, uh, tomorrow is a Tuesday Tech Talk for all these questions about YouTube are more than welcome. And we're going to answer those tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's a very good comparison, Karen, actually. Very good yes. comparison. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Spawn on. Uh, she reminds me of Rita Moreno in her younger years. Yes. Oh, very Marcel's true. here. And of course, as always, he's a wonderful man. <laughs> He reminds me of Steve Martin. I'm a wild and crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> like that, yeah. Jenny O'Brien is here as well. Lady Days is here. I think hey. it's time for a roll call. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I'm going to call you guys out. And in the meantime, don't forget, it's not too late to get your selfies up there. Love seeing you guys' photos. Uh, don't forget to please use the hashtag Blue Wrench Group so everybody can see you. And if any, we got asked last night how that works is follow the link. And when it comes up, the, the, the box to put your picture in. Just make sure whatever you type, you make sure that the hashtag Blue Wrench Group is included into it, and that'll make it visible for everybody. And with that said, let's give you guys an arena size welcome, because you guys are always the stars of the show tonight now, because we have our guests. They take the first place, but you guys are a very, very close second. Without you guys, we'd have no show, so it all kind of works together, doesn't it, in the end? And I didn't even need to say that part now, <laughs> I'm realizing. So anyways, without, as I always say, without further ado... We're going to put on some echo. <laughs> kind of left over from last night. I think so. Yes. Let's keep it. Let's keep it together today. <laughs> All righty. Okay, guys, I want to say a big hello to you. It's your boy, Leo, with Pigeon Outdoors, Vexi Killer, unofficial bucket list family. Time at Timmy Turner is in here. Tiffany Seasons. The real Jada Queen. Theoretical Pops is here. The, sh uh, the Shiny Collector, JVB. The Creator Spotlight Show. Terrell's Artwork Channel, Syntax AI. Sunshine Cooper, StarCop97 is here. Speech Fairies, Sleeping Artist, ASMR. So with easy, uh, so with easy by Sophia. Uh, I'm always tailoring, Sophia tailoring. I'm so sorry. I'm bad with the ones all together. Not your fault. Completely mine. <laughs> Sonia Diamonds is in here. We have Rosalrama videos. Ralph Morick, Prevolution. Open shut up. My family garden. We have Moto Mat Man. Mister Funniness. We have Monger Me Sideways. Minion Moto. Max Martin. Mary Jane Giveaway, Marcel Harding, Mad Fish Diva, uh, Lena Music, Larry Johnson, Two Creeks Outdoors, Lady Days, Karaoke Ken, Just Eight, Just Kev, Jules 777, Jenny O'Brien, Jelly Duck 100, Izzy Fam, Huda, Hooper Kid Jr., Good Times Outdoors, Good job, buddy. Games and anime. Gator bite. Elma. Eileen Villiers, the fam. Drone tread on me. D Squad. Oh, thank you so much, D Squad. You were so kind. Of you. Thank you so very much. I really, we really do appreciate that. Thank you for your support. Crazy chicken dude is here. Karen Somers, with, uh, who we thank for tonight's guest very much introducing us. We have Bossy in the house. We have Bloodthirsty Gaming, ASAP Fishing One, Alex the Blue Man Reviewer and Gamer, 601 Travels. Welcome to each one of you. Guys, it had rebooted on me, uh, uh, buffered on me, so I didn't get everybody that's in here. So we missed your names. Please say hi and highlight ours so we definitely can give you a hello. Hello to How to Cook by Ellen Kalula. Uh, Raising Seven Munchkins is here as well. Hi. Hello. Hey, Good to see you. Budget Outdoor Survival. That's an early morning for you. Hello. Good morning. Um, 
Casey Green, hello, Madfish Diva. Uh, good to see you all here. Thank you so much for joining. And if you are listening to us on your headphones and uh, just uh, watching, hello to you as well. Say hi in the chat if you can, and if you can, that's okay too. Hope you enjoy your evening or morning. Oh my God, Bloodthirsty Gaming, thank you so very much. That is so kind thank of you. you. And you help us as well, remember guys, we're all in together. And that, that's really kind of you. Thank you so very much. Miss Ryan Arda is right. here as well. Uh, Nike Girl is here. Look, nice, great. Nike Girl, how are you? Yes, you did. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Great to see you all in here, guys. Boom, selfie is up. Excellent. We're going to take a look at selfies in just a second, guys. And it is not too late to get your selfies up there. A selfie of you watching us. If you can't do that, a selfie of you. Upload it. Just please make sure to include the hashtag Blue Wrench Group so everybody can see you. Oh, Prevolution, hey, you want it fair and square. Fair and square. <laughs> of course, yep. uh, you know, uh, our wheel is, uh, is like a lottery. You never <laughs> yeah. know who is gonna win. <laughs> so thanks the wheel, as, as Budget uh, Ador says. Uh, Zovo Place, thank you so much for supporting us through yes. Super Chat as well. Much appreciated that, well, thank, thank you. you. Hope you're having a really great day. Guys, we got a great crowd in here, but please keep uh, tweeting it out, hit that like button. Tell some friends about it, guys, to come and hang out. And awesome. part-time detector is here in the Huntsman. Sorry for interrupting you, my dear husband, but Huntsman <laughs> is here. I had <laughs> to say hi. <laughs> Huntsman, how are you? Great to see you, it's my friend. It's not the first time interrupting. It's the first time. I'm <coughs> sorry. Uh, well, uh, a good cemetery's music. gone bad. Great to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Lana Music, thank you so much for supporting oh, us as well as Goose76. Thank, thank you so much for supporting us through Super Chat. Much appreciated. Thank Great you. to have you all here. You guys are awesome. Arizona Timeless Tourist, hello. Always great to have you in the house. How are you doing, my friend? Tony's Reviews, how are you? Don't worry, anybody can rock so I'm here. You're so awesome. <laughs> yes, Alva Mami, uh, times three. Uh, good to see you too. Uh... Well, you're here, so you're not banned. <laughs> um, <laughs> bloodthirsty Gaming. <laughs> um, uh, congratulations on that. Um, well, Minion Motto. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good times outdoors. Uh, Russell Rama videos, of course, uh, here as well. Uh, Brian Fingerless Hi. Guitar. Hello. Great to see you. Great to see you. And Syntax is awake, uh, although it's past midnight. We definitely want you to get sleep, but it is always a pleasure to have you in. Just so. Pamela Hi. here as well. Bass Camel, Bass Camel is here. Welcome. Good to see you guys mm. here. Uh, just a reminder to like and share if oh Skyheart, how are you doing? To like and share if you haven't yet, and uh, of course uh, if you're new, uh, hit that bell and that subscribe button somewhere down below. Good to see you as well, Open Shot. Great to have you in here, Mystery Steamboat. Always a pleasure. South Texas Prepper STP, doing great. Hope you're doing great as well. Suresh Music and Blogs. Asgar Studios, Suzanne Simao, uh, hello. Yeah, Night Girl, uh, we're we kind of Ben and I running the same path. Yeah, he's awesome, a good friend of ours. <laughs> West Haven, always and forever. How are you? Thank you so very much for that. It's really appreciated. Sumi's in here. Great to see you, Brenda's Beauty Vlog. How are you? How are you? Oh, oh, Brenda, please, uh, no uh, self promotion, please. Just uh, we got to keep it fair for everybody. Can you remove it? Because otherwise I got to time you out. It won't give me the options. So just to keep it fair for everybody. Yeah, please no self-promotion yeah. here today. If you decide to network, that's all good for us. But uh, let's keep it outside yeah. of the chat and uh, leave a comment on uh, people's video that you're following. That's anyway is the yeah. best way to show them. No problem. No problem, Brenna. No problem. We love having you. Yes, we love having <laughs> you. So it's great to have you in here. Uh, and uh, yeah. there is already a question from Karen, Karen Sommers, uh, so I'm definitely going to be copying that. And thank you for a reminder. If you guys have questions to our guests, uh, please put at Push Studios or hashtag Push Studios uh, if you're on the phone, uh, so I can see it and copy it. And we definitely are going to ask it during the show. Uh, so uh, definitely okay. you can ask all the questions. Guys, we're going to have to jump to the selfies very soon because we want to check them all out. And our guests will be on in just a few minutes, guys. Two awesome people. There you go. Lisa Quinn. With uh, This is her uh, a humor channel, but she's also a fantastic singer. She's just got everything going on. What an unbelievable talent. And talents are always great in pairs. And this is her husband here. 
her fiance, I should say. Uh, th- th- they are married now. Yes, yes they yeah. are married. I they're married my words. Uh, a year and a half, around. Because I get caught. We were talking tonight on the dry run about their uh, when she said she uh, accepted his uh, engagement. Uh, yeah, well, they they yeah. they look like they have been just married, but uh, yeah. they had a year anniversary on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, so uh, yes, yeah. uh, a little bit more than uh, a year. Uh, and uh, amazing uh, uh, cinematographer as well, guys. Really, really impressive work that he does. We'll look into that a little bit later. Uh, yeah, just unbelievable people, guys. So let's take a look at those selfies. And I believe they're in the selfies, if I'm they not mistaken. They are. They are. We got Jelly Duck making a new album on my music project. Wow. Very oh, that nice. is awesome. I like that. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool, my friend. Definitely keep us up to date on how that's going. Oh, there's Rosalama from Paris, where mm. he's r- residing. Thank you so very much, my friend. Yeah, he's joining us from France. Yes. Beautiful. What a beautiful picture. You are such an amazing photographer. <coughs> Pardon me. And another one from, wow. Nice. New video on my channel. Very nice. You always just oh I gotta I gotta pause that there that's what was catching my eye, make sure everything there that's better. I had the uh, window open as well and I was getting like a ten second delay. Jenny, what's going on? Always great to see you. Sitting there with Viva Frey, how awesome is that? Yes. Hope you're having an awesome night. Patricia Sprinkles, how are you? Really great to see you. Syntax AI, how are you, my friend? How are you today? Wishing you all the best. Uh, you are so such a pleasure to have in here. And like I say, we want you to get sleep. We don't want to keep you up all night. Sleep is important, but we're glad that you could join us. So thank you so very much. Gator Bite, what's going on? Always so nice to see you. Always such a pleasure. It was great talking with you, too, last Friday night, too. It was great to have some lots of communication going in that. Uh, you are awesome. Thank you so very much. Casey Green. Casey Green. Down to just one video in the quarry. Got you on the TV while I catch uh, while I catch back up. Well, thank you so very much. Paul Murray is in the house. Hi, Paul. How are you? ATGH Travels and yeah. AU Pack Mule is here as well. Great to see you, Paul. No, I have not seen Val yet. And there's our lovely guests for tonight, guys. And they are so amazing and so fun. I can't wait for you guys to get to meet them. We're going to have such a great conversation. Yes, Liza Quinn and yes. Omar Chavez Jr. Isn't uh, that a great selfie? See, even their selfies, they do fantastic. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Beautiful and fun uh, yes. couple. So looking forward to that. ATGH Travels, how are you? So great to see you. AU Pack Mule as well. Guys, please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to tweet it out. Let's get as many people in here to see our awesome guest as uh, they definitely are going to wow you. Oh my God! Greetings to Lisa and Pusha Studios. Look at that! Look at that from Karen Somers. To say hi to them and their great guest today, and thank you once again, Karen, for connecting us. We uh, really, truly do appreciate it. You are so phenomenal. Orton Images, Orton Images. What's going? On? No, oh no, tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for keeping in touch, nonetheless. <laughs> Glad you got that post up there. Wood Pigeon Outdoors, there's our buddy Jason. Munchkin showing some love. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Thank you so very much. Holy God, they're coming in like crazy. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Oh, we love seeing yep. you guys' His faces connect uh, on a human level. It is unbelievably Sleeping nice. Artist ASMR. It's Monday. Time to watch. Thank you so very much. And always love having you in there. The two of you look so comfortable. Thank you once again. Very nice. And we have theoretical pops. What's going on? Oh, we're on the big screen. It's still so weird every time oh we see god. that. Oh my god! Wow. Oh my god! There you go. And see it. all the defects. Got these pops <laughs> up there. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh my god! Thank you so much, my friend. And great having you in. Always such a pleasure. Thank you so very much. Oh my god! Budget outdoors. This is survival. I love it. Oh, nice. Love that. And dressed. Yeah. Extra <laughs> nice. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're quite the woman. <laughs> that was really cool. Thank you so very much. And there's our buddy Dave. What's going on, my friend? Always love Dave's selfies. You never know where we're going to end up with him. Yes, I love that. So, like I say, he's like the coolest guy. We definitely have to meet up one day. Oh, uh, definitely. I can just go do selfies together. <laughs> Time spent with Spooster Studios is as sweet as money from home. 
<laughs> you are so amazing, Tony. Absolutely love your selfies. You are so good at it. Yes, our movie star. Yeah, exactly. That's how I call He's him. amazing, though. He's, I love the way he just owns it. I love it. I went to the park this morning, and it's beautiful, just like uh, Channel Pusha Studios. All about glam. Welcome here. Hi. Uh, uh, referred by uh, Orient Star. <coughs> Great to see you. She Great has sent our way so many amazing it's creators. It's unbelievable. Yes. And Sparky's yes. here, of course. Yes. Yeah, this is really cool, Vexicore. Thank you so very Beautiful. much. Beautiful. Love that. Yes. Love flower crown. Dean, how smart is that? Look at that. Nice. Look at that. He's tying his own timeless tourist hat on, looking out in the horizon. Seems such a fun. Like him and his red car. He does what he wants. He, he goes with the wind. He takes the highway by his hand. <laughs> no, it's like, it's it, every time I look at his selfies, it's like a commercial. <laughs> no, I agree with you. It does. It's just when you do it, it's so funny. That's all. <laughs> Yeah. But yes, I agree <laughs> with you. You make a you a really good point. <laughs> Sorry, Timothy, how are you? Hello, everyone from Bluetooth Studios. Fam, God bless you all with the live stream tonight. I can't wait to see what we have in store for tonight live stream. I love you all so much. Thank you so very much, Timothy. Pleasure to see you, and really appreciate you taking the time for your selfies. Uh, look for my first homemade board game currently on its way. Nice. nice, very nice, awesome, very very cool. Love that. That is awesome, my friend. And drone tread on me. What's going on, my friend? I think this is the first time you put up a selfie, if I'm not mistaken. Awesome yes, to I see think you. So yes. Thank you so very much. Really pleasure to see it. Cool man. Cheers. That Steve the Technophile, awesome. how are you? And uh, I just wanted to say a special thank you also to the early kit in uh, who today uh, did another wonder of connecting us with an amazing creator. I'm not going to say who yet. Yes. Just, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but uh, that was stunningly well done. And thank you so much, uh, the early kit in. Uh, she is going to be, uh, <laughs> she's doing a happy dance. That's why she's probably still not here because she's still happy <laughs> dancing as, as she uh, as was saying all the day today. Uh, this is guy with guys what it's all about. Uh, you know, uh, you guys can refer us amazing creators here. And uh, yeah, thank you. Just uh. wanted to thank you once again. Uh, well, we're going to be inviting our guest uh, just in a couple of minutes here. Uh, so it's your time to run for a coffee, uh, go to the bathroom, uh, you know, refresh anything you have to do uh, to be here just in a couple of minutes when they're going to be joining us. And uh, uh, enjoy your night. And of course, you can always ask your questions. Uh, put at Push Studios, hashtag Push Studios and ask it. And we are going to be asking to our guests as well. Yep. That's right, guys. So we'll have them on in just a minute. Really looking forward to get them on. They're going to join us. You'll hear the doorbell. <coughs> and then we'll get them set up in OBS. And then it'll be time to start the show. Because we got to get talking to these people. They are fantastic. And they've been so kind with their time as well. Yes, because they are really busy uh, with their schedule as well. So that's uh, uh, we're always thankful for that. Yeah. No, they, guys, let's see where we're at here right now. Oh, we're doing great. We're doing great. Excellent, guys. If you guys can tweet it out, uh, let people know, hit the like button, tell friends, put it out on Facebook, whichever one. Facebook takes a while to get uh, people to notice, but it does help for the longer term. Twitter is the fastest way always to get the YouTube message across. If you guys could do that, it would be really, really awesome. And don't be shy if you can to tell some friends and that if they're not doing anything else. Ooh, so. I always jump up with this. Oh, Canadian Brewing Channel, you made it. Oh, great to have oh. you. Great to have you. There we go. I'm just going to get our guests set up here, guys, and we'll be ready in just a second. So looking so forward to having them on. I think everything is just about ready to go. Let me just get the free. Now you going. can hear us. Now you we can hear now. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Let me get you guys on. All right, guys. Hi, there's guys. our guest. How are Hi. you? Hello. Hi. So nice to see you. You guys as well. Likewise. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We're very excited. I was just talking about the place tonight. Doesn't it look cool? The yes, I know. The red wall. <laughs> ah. I right away noticed the red wall. I love that. Yes, Xenia's <laughs> favorite color is red, so I was yeah. excited to see her reaction. Oh, you like that color? Oh, awesome. Well, yeah, we had navy blue, which we have to do right, in, the living in the living room. room. So we were trying to balance it out with some red, but we well, just look for walls we could shoot against well, whenever possible. I think it looks fantastic myself. So. Paint with that in mind. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, no. 
No, it's his idea. I can't even take credit for that. Well, you take a little. <laughs> Don't well, be shy. Thank you so much. I help. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. It is truly a pleasure. And thank you to Karen once oh, again pleasure. for connecting us. Uh, that Hi, was Karen. Idea. Thank you. Karen is just awesome. Yeah. <laughs> she really is. Can, can we go full screen here? Um, on? This one? I yeah, just want to see a little bit bigger. To see if I get, okay, here we go. We go. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no. I want you guys <laughs> to be comfortable in that. And I know you're just getting used to Zoom on top of that. So, uh, yeah, not, this not, is actually the first time you, you, we've used it. So, we, yes, yeah. we decided to go with it just because it preserves each full HD. So, it really brings out the best in audio and video. So, we want to, we're turning these into podcasts a little later on and stuff like that. So, it saves a lot of trouble down the road. Wonderful. So. We're Excellent. learning some things. <laughs> well, learning, you guys, you guys have <laughs> a lot you. to teach as well. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I don't know about that. I don't know. We're just we're figuring it out. Like, how to, uh, how to be losers. No. <laughs> <laughs> She says, she's That's, with a dark sense of humor. <laughs> We're going to get along just fine. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, we, are on, we are on different levels of volume. Uh, just uh, a note. Are we louder? Are we too loud? I'm going to bring, uh, I think, so, but it's, for the, it's probably the way it's being fed in. I'm going to bring them down in here a bit. There okay, we go. Okay, yeah. Cause my is, it, is it better now, guys? Uh, yeah. In the chat? Uh, fine for us, as long as. Oh, you mean in the chat? Yeah, Sorry. No, <laughs> we're just. Oh, this is that's the nice thing about an interactive audience. At least you can get direct feedback. It's yeah, not like sound a is good stage. now. So yeah. perfect. Gotcha. Thank you so much for letting us know. Thank you. <laughs> what? Okay, cool. So I want to welcome you guys first of all, and I want to thank you because you guys have some very busy lives. So to take the time to come and talk to us really means a lot. So no, it means a lot for for you guys to have us on, really. So thank you. Well, you guys are right up our alley. We're always looking for new things, on, and it always comes back to YouTube, but I mean, it's not just limited to. There's lots of people that sing here, lots of people who are movie makers on here. Some people that even collect cards, which I just think is the greatest thing. We're going to dive really deep into that in a little Nerds. bit. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Of course. Well, every, every, every woman loves a nerdy guy. Isn't that true? A little bit into uh, yeah. Married. <laughs> Married. Guys, there's hope for you. <laughs> Nah, it's actually really Just cool. Just fly the nerd flag. <laughs> Wear it with we'll pride. We'll get into that a little bit more yeah. for sure. Well, you guys do. And that's what I, I'll tell you the truth. I was telling some friends. We're always talking to Hangouts. And I'm like, oh, we got this couple that's coming on. I, I showed some of you your Instagrams. And I showed all the work you guys do. And then I showed your channel with your comedy. And a friend of mine goes, I love them. He goes, they're, they're so great to look at. And they have so much humor. What an amazing combo. Mm -hmm. That's so rare. That's very nice. Thank so you. So nice. Very appreciate nice. Appreciate that. Tell your friend that much appreciated. Yeah, they uh, appreciate the feedback. You know how hard this can be. So it's like any encouragement and support is, you know, appreciated. But it's a great mix, though. And, and it is kind of rare. And we started talking about that, how rare it is. It seems like it usually has to be one or the other for the most part within some reason. And even especially you, we we're saying, too, because, you know, women are really starting to make their mark in comedy. But it was quite daring for you to do so with your vocals and, and you know, the appeal and the allure and to go into the comedy side so deep. It's kind of a testament of how much things have changed this day and age and how many new avenues are available. That's absolutely true. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I was hesitant at first, not because of any negativity or anything. You kind of get used to that in entertainment. You just kind of roll with the punches. Right. Not everyone's going to like you, you know, you're, just, you're like, okay, that's okay, you know. Mm. Um, but I did come from having a love of the theater as, as a kid, and I studied theater, and I actually almost went to university for theater at Tisch NYU. Um, mm. So it was a big part as much of, of my life, as much as music, for right. a long time. Uh, and I've always been fascinated ever since I was a kid. I remember in high school, I, um, I would kind of observe my the teachers <laughs> and then create these characters out of them. Mm. And, on the breaks, you know, make my friends laugh by showing them little, you know, little things I'd come up with and stuff. So it was always something that I was fascinated by um, and had a respect for. But being so many years, I felt like a music career was, um, in in that sense back then, obviously it's an old way of thinking now, but back then I used to think, oh, this is short-lived. Yeah. I better put all my focus into it. Or, you know, people would tell you like, you're never going to be respected if you just don't hone in and focus on one thing, you know? So I thought, okay, well, let me pick a focus. And that was just the thing I was most motivated by at the time. Uh, and I didn't want it to pass me by. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, let me just dive in head first. So I think my fear became, 
how will people look at me? Not like I'm anybody famous or anything, so it's not like it matters. No. But, but I, it was just, you know, I think the biggest thing you think of are your colleagues, maybe. You yes. Know? Yes. Uh, are they going to still take me seriously? Am I going to still be able to work in this field? Even friends and family. Friends and family, like yeah. you know, and I and it's funny because I'm also I, I vocal coach as well. Right. Um, a professional and 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 uh, amateur singers and uh and I and I would always think, man, I hope my students still respect me the same way, <laughs> you know, like when they tune in and I'm in like a mustache, <laughs> that was so <laughs> dressed funny. as like this, like you know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, stoner character in the grunge t-shirt. I don't know. And I'm thinking like, what? how are they going to see me? But they've actually responded really well. Uh, so not to get too long-winded, too late for that. But no. that's uh, the idea was, yeah, it could be scary at first. You're not <laughs> long-winded. You're here to talk. We're here to talk about you. So <laughs> both of you, I should say. <laughs> My apologies, <laughs> but yeah. But I, I think it always adds a value to personality and person in general when you can laugh at yourself and, and laugh with others and having a great sense of humor, which you both obviously have. It, it's a great thank added value, uh, you know, to anything what you're doing, in my opinion. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, it's been fun kind of tapping into all the facets of things that we've both been involved in for so many years. Um, and to kind of have it be a culmination of all of our, the skill sets we've gone developing and kind of, you know, putting our strengths together has been really cool because actually he was the one who encouraged that the most because he would tell me, you're selling yourself short by just yeah. doing the one thing. You don't have to anymore. You could be multifaceted. Well, it's funny because it's just the the industry, the content creation industry, whatever that, whatever that's, for whatever that's worth has changed significantly over the years. Yes. You know, it used to be that you had to be focused. Right. Um, but now you have people who are like, you know, mega movie stars like Will Smith and, and, you know, and virtually overnight grew an enormous Instagram following, has a YouTube channel, has great content. He's like understanding the shift. It's yeah. kind of like very, you gotta be dynamic right now. Yes. Uh, so that's yeah, I think as I heard something recently. I listened to a lot of podcasts, uh, now yours as well. I will be <laughs> tuning into, but I love listening to podcasts about like, uh, entrepreneurs and, and how they developed and, uh, also listening to obviously these young entrepreneurs, these kids that have almost by accident <laughs> by just kind of, um, being themselves right. and taking yep. people on their journey, build these huge followings and then turn that into a big business. Uh, and I, I think listening to those stories, you, you start realizing that as long as you take people on the journey with you, whatever that is, wherever it goes, you don't have to keep it um, just one dimensional. You know, you can just kind of take them along with you. That is a very good point. We were talking about that the other night, like even in people's work lives now, there's no more, there's not that thing, well, I'll work at Ford for 30 years, get my pension and leave. We live very multifaceted world. Our life Absolutely. is like uh, an entertainer. You know, there's all you're going to live probably five minimum paths in your life, your adult life doing so. And that's what's opened up, like you say, for creators and people that weren't even creators at first who became creators was that openness to be able to choose your path. And there's always somebody who wants to follow with you. There's such a, an, an un, not a narrow market anymore. Everybody's looking yeah. for that multifaceted side. They want mm -hmm. to see all angles. They want multidimensional people. People that can, mm -hmm. you know, years ago, you if you were an actor, you never sang until your career was pretty much shot, and then they would let you at the end, or vice versa. You know, it, right? It was kind of the ending, not the beginning. Now, sky's the limit. Well, it's interesting because you think about like the era of like musical films, let's say, and then you had people like Fred Astaire and right. you know yes. Crosby. Like, I yes. remember that. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Back in our day, talkies were talking but but they were a very <laughs> they were kind of a real niche at the time. You know, it wasn't the majority. Right. You know, that's the, true. That was the thing about it. You know, and and then, but it was almost like, and I'm sorry to interrupt. But no. the whole, it was almost like we lost the light here. He's gonna. Oh no problem. <laughs> the battery died. But we, I think it was almost like the more uh, well trained you were in a variety of things, the more you'd be working, right? Oh, definitely. Like, Huge motion pictures with these big sets and the ladies with feathers and you yeah, know what I'm saying? it was just like kind of like it was well respected. Yes, I guess is the and it was the elitist that got them chances. The truth is, you had to be so functional in those talents, not even just touch your feet in it. But now you can go and dance and like do a horrible job, and people will still <laughs> laugh and love you for it because you're an amazing singer, because you have all these things. <laughs> or you might bake a cake and it goes, but you know, you can do with the world. The sky, the sky is the limit now. Anything can happen. You bring up a good point about um, kind of showing your weaknesses too. Yes, mm. I think when we're kind of always just putting the good stuff out there, it's kind of it just seems hard to relate sometimes to that. Uh, mm. You know, 
to a, a broader audience. And yeah. I think it's important to let people know, like, this takes a village. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> There's like six I, people I, off I, camera. You guys don't see it. <laughs> I got to blow dry. I got to oh. use the curling iron. I need to do But I like thing. that you guys are putting the blooper videos out yeah. there. And, and like you say in a in yeah. couple of your videos that you like to go all the way out there. Like if yeah. you're doing it, you're doing it all the way out. And you can see it at the same time you put these blooper videos, which are like hilarious. They're th as funny as your actual videos, you yes. know, as you just Thanks. said to show, you know, it's not everything is perfect and that's fine. No. You know, yeah. it's fine. Go. And not that, at all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely not. And I think um, while we love to, you know, he loves to obviously go see movies. When it, we don't really get a chance yeah. too much these days, but um, but we love to go and like I love to sit and wait and see if they're going to be like some bloopers or some sure. outtake reels or something. And I've always thought that what's fascinating is kind of seeing the process in action. Of course. Um, and people don't really get to see that. Like I had mentioned in that video that we don't. We're trying to get better. We use both cameras usually, so we don't have like a third one to set up for BTS. You right, know, we right. Worked yeah. that out yet. So um, it's hard for people to kind of see the process unless they're just kind of seeing the bloopers. And I feel like his laugh is infectious. <laughs> so I figured, I was like, well, you know what, babe? I think I want to do my first bloopers reel. I had accumulated enough content. Uh, and I was like, because if this is, you know, this is cracking me up, I just feel like maybe it'll spread, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so That's it seemed true. to be pretty well received, and we appreciated that. That was fun. So I'm hoping after a, a few, another batch, we could do another blooper. It was great. Like you're just like cracking up at points, and I <laughs> you can truly see how much the humor inside of it. And that, that's a human uh, side, you know. That's what people want yeah. is a human no, side. She, she definitely makes me laugh. Like, <laughs> and when I start laughing, it's like I, it's like cry, tears. I I'm like sweating. I, like I can barely hold the camera straight. It's it's. Well, I tell funny. some people, I'm like, okay, if I can, oh, I see where you're rolling. The... Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Jerry, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I, I always tell people that I feel like as I'm improving, right? I'll just kind of throw things out there. And if I can make him break, that's usually the take I'll keep. Yeah, that's yeah. the final seal of approval. <laughs> it's like getting a hand. I'm shake. like, okay, I might be on to something if I was able to make him cry with zero laughter. That's <laughs> awesome. And, and now you guys it's really seem to be enjoying the process of working together. And you seem like, once again, the couples do that well when they uh, accentuate each other one's fault. Like, what one's good at the other one is not, and vice versa, or doesn't have as great a strength. Yeah. You at don't step on each threat, other's toes. At the threat of sounding very, like, too romantic and cheesy. <sighs> the fact is, like, when I when I really started working with her was the first time in my life I'd ever had that kind of partnership with somebody Sweet. uh that i was that i was seeing or dating or whatever and and it just it was different it felt like very collaborative it really felt like oh so this is what it should feel like right well we that's... actually fell in love while creating so that's right. a kind of a part of the story that people don't know we weren't doing like the formal date thing quite yet we were creating right so that that was kind of cool we had collaborated many years prior uh on like some blog posts uh, so we had been kind of dabbling in creating stuff here and there, mm -hmm. just hadn't really known how to kind of evolve it into something. Uh, and, so oh. if, if we can pull back a bit, and I, I always uh, like to hear the romantic part of the story, right? Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Uh, so so where, where did you first meet? Or how did you first meet? I know you, you just mentioned the blog. Sure. And uh, you, you just mentioned the blog. And I know you had a lifestyle blog uh, with the uh, fashion I, shoots and all of that there. I was, did. Mm -hmm. Well, you're incredible. Your research is incredible. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah. I got, I, we were listening. We were watching at the beginning. And I was like, this is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> if I forget. There's like I, posts from like 15 years ago. <laughs> I didn't know that was on the internet. I was about to be like, man, if I forget something about myself. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm, no, no, yeah. Jer <laughs> no, Jerry Springer, I promise. Hey, yeah. Wait, I look it up. Uh, no Jerry yeah. Springer here. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I love it. I, no, I, I, I was very impressed. I think it's great. Uh, and, and yes, going, going back to that, um, we had met through a mutual friend, mm -hmm. I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we were both in other relationships. 
throughout the course of the 10 years. We met in another relationship. He was in a relationship. I was in a uh, And it was very just friendly and, oh, hello, you know. Mm. Um, obviously, I thought he was easy on the eyes, but, I, I you know, in a very respectful manner. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I just, you know, left it at that. And mm. then um, we just had a chance to collaborate. It was also very professional. And we just worked really well together. It was cool. And then kind of disconnected and then got reconnected by that same person uh, many years later. And at that time, we just so happened to be um, not in relationships. Hmm. We started, he he had just gotten a bunch of gear Hmm. and he was looking to create content again, Hmm. except this time more, you know, uh, content for YouTube. Right video content the photography he was kind of like getting into again as well and uh, that's where those photos came that you mentioned about the letter to an ex was a, a based off of a script that he showed me right that uh, for a short film and i was like man this is fantastic it was like, you're so gifted like how can i be a part of this with you, <laughs> you know? so i was sincerely a fan like i just was i thought he was just very talented um and he was like you really wanted to help me with this i said yes like let's do it and that whole thing, obviously, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a very sensual uh, project, <laughs> but so that might have had something to do with it. No, but we uh, obviously, uh, you know, were having just this amazing time and we started just flowing with all these ideas and doing all this stuff. And, you know, from there, obviously, everything evolved very quickly and we uh, we were a couple for a very short time before we were engaged and then married like six months later so wow. we didn't waste any time that's why it was kind of like are they engaged are they married it's because it was all kind of all happened at the same time yeah and i know i got stage fright a while ago i do that sometimes <laughs> and then i didn't and I catch each other <laughs> I, and, and thank you for answering because i had kind of this question in uh, mind when i was uh, looking at the, at the pictures that you just mentioned uh were they dating or were they married already well hmm. if they haven't been dating they definitely were <laughs> afterwards <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a little hot and heavy, it was a little hot and heavy but it was uh, fabulous <laughs> fabulous beautiful pictures and the video reel as well i i just love the mystique in the video reel it's it's like thank it's, you uh, thank whether you it's guys. your comedy your photos your singing everything always has its best foot forward mm-hmm. as far as professionalism that's one thing that's Thanks. a yeah. sink right across the board you guys really put a lot of care into what you do and it shows and i love that you, you leave nothing, no detail left behind. Everything just right. is nice. Not in a bad way, like you said, not to look inhuman or show imperfections. That's what the, the, the blooper reels are. But even the comedy right. is very well done. Great camera angles, great timing. Appreciate uh, that. And color Appreciate great that. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's it's really uh, fantastic to hear. And some people appreciate that kind of stuff because, you know, YouTube is like kind of a free-for-all in a way. Like yes. there's all kinds of different content. There's and I think there's space for all that different kinds of content, but yep. it, it's always nice when you know that you're putting in a, a certain amount of effort, a certain amount of care, a certain amount of, you know, patience and practice into something that people are seeing it and noticing that and appreciating that. So that's great to hear. So well, especially on this much. platform where everything is so instantaneous. I mean, it Correct. is nice to yeah. get that, you know, and, and it is, I really know that I do editing video and that's my, f- mm. I have a love for editing. That's my passion. I, even though I played music and all this stuff and I've tied my love of music into my editing. I'm very right. by beat. I like the whole layout. It's the same thing as scoring any song is, this, is, is sure. editing. Absolutely. It's, and I love uh, the images on your Instagram so beautiful thank you (laughs) i I haven't posted anything since august actually and i i said when i hit 1000 then i'll put something on again (laughs) (laughs) because we've been so busy with youtube and and i kind of don't know how to transition really between my photography and youtube Uh. so it's it's tough you know uh, yeah we were chatting about that earlier about how uh kind of you know uh, Instagram is very kind of visual mm-hmm. and I and in it was very I was leaning toward a lot of the photography and some mm-hmm. music content before and that kind of making that funnel the in the other direction to the YouTube stuff has been hard so I've basically been tapping into like a brand new audience that uh has been interesting mm-hmm. because I'm I'm not really kind of in the circle of other creators doing sketch comedy so I'm trying to kind of meet more and and discover more and it's been nice through YouTube I've been able to kind of meet a couple other uh, creators that do that 
Uh, but it's you know it's new. It's new. It's still, it's still all very new to us anyway. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, it it is, and I mean it's just kind of getting your name out there, and then once you have enough of an audience pushing you, then it will hopefully then you get something you get more notice from the ones who are doing the sure. same as you. Sure. You know, it takes time. Yeah. And, and it's networking. a process. It's a totally a process. I, I mean, if, if I have, if I could say one thing to anyone who, who wants to do this is you just have to be very, very patient. Yes. Like, and, uh, and, you know, obviously having skill matters, having talent matters, having all, all of that, you know, all the technical skill, all the creativity, all that's great. But if you're not, if you don't have perseverance, you, you can't do it. No, uh, that's the number one thing. Yeah, I think we it all is. know it's a combo of, of of a lot of things. And uh, as far as like the, it's, it's going back to what you were mentioning about the quality thing. I think that's what also made us work well together was that we both kind of expected, yeah, the same kind of level of output. Yes. Yeah. Um, and when I tend, when I decide to be a, a little bit, you know, the video side of things is new to me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm learning how to edit through him, and I'm learning when some when some things are. A disaster, and he'll tell me like, "What is this framing? What are you doing?" <laughs> so he forces me to try to really pay close attention to detail and mm -hmm. to be outside of my comfort zone and learn things that I'm not used to. So having that push, I think, is important too. And also too, when you have somebody that is very good at something, it's nice when they push you because you know you're in good hands. You know they're they're guiding mm -hmm. you towards something you know has a very good chance of a, a, a proper outcome. So it's a little more comforting, I'm sure, because you yeah, balance. absolutely. And I think the more you know he's forcing me to be a little bit more autonomous too right um so that when he's spread really thin i can pick up the load and you know set up a timeline or shoot some stuff on my own and um that's been really helpful and i think the more autonomous people are yes uh, the better you know for yourself you just get more done <laughs> we kind of we kind of go over the gray area like you guys we have our sides but yeah, there is the gray areas we're going to like i gotta get teach xenia more about obs Right. That we use for our, our, uh, our streaming right now because I feel bad. Every Thursday we do a shout out in the afternoon day and I got to get my daughter at three o'clock off the bus and I kind of leave her high and dry with this whole control unit. So I got to call it a channel before I and leave. And everybody so, runs. No, they don't. She keeps saying that all the time. They run away. <laughs> <laughs> I always laugh when we when we started our live streams. Uh, we like we had around the same amount of, of uh, female and male audience, but then when all of a sudden we started live streaming, uh, most of the women just <laughs> run, really? away, run away. They ran away. They, they finally realized that it's not. No. Well, let me see if I can do something about that. Hi, how are you, ladies? Oh my god! I'm the gentleman. Wait, nice to meet you. See, it's hard collection. <laughs> that's definitely. That's definitely hey. Don't be jealous. <laughs> oh just... my god. <laughs> Were we supposed to pause that? No, no. Oh. it's muted. Okay. You're good. <laughs> You're good. No, thank you. Thank you. It's definitely gonna draw some some but no, we, and it took oh. a, a long while to kind of shift it back, you know, oh. and, and that's why every time when he leaves now it's like help, help, <laughs> I can't do and right. when I was watching your video uh of, of uh one of your videos when you were saying that you can do it on your own, oh. you know, and oh, yeah. was, I'm like, Oh my god, I can so please see this, you know, I can <laughs> this is exactly what is happening. <laughs> Did you guys you know, see time. the framing on that stuff? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. You know what? That's actually, what's so funny was that it was like a two-week span where, or longer possibly, um, where he was, he had taken on a lot of projects that mm, ended up. Too much. Too many mm. projects and not realizing they were going to start to overlap. Right. So he was just like really kind of oh, overwhelmed. Right. And I, my, this episode I wanted to do kind of just kept, getting pushed back because I just couldn't do it without him. Um, so finally, I was like, you know what? I'm going to write an episode about what it's like to have to do this without you. <laughs> and that's where that came from was that I finally just. Uh, and that was very so smart. So it really was based off of true experience. So, But very uh, smart to do. <laughs> yes. The... I was like, well, now if it looks crappy, I have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. Yeah. But that was so funny. <laughs> I, I felt you all the way through. I'm like, yes, she. <laughs> that's exactly what is happening. <laughs> well, what was interesting about that experience was I felt like it opened up a different conversation for me to kind of. Um, chat with other creators about mm -hmm. so in uh we are a part of a group on facebook called no small creators and we uh, karen 
Karen is. I think we, part, we might have found, yeah, yeah, Karen. She found yep. us through there. Through No Small yeah. Creator. And, and I think there, that, that was also cool because some of those people discovered that video and were like, oh my God, totally. <laughs> I feel you. So that was kind of cool too. It's a little he, slightly different approach. Oh, they can relate. <laughs> they all get it. <laughs> Everybody's in Everybody. that. Knows what that's like. And that's what I tell people. Someone come in, I don't know what to do a video about and I'm so busy. Do a video about being busy. Take yeah. it with you. You know, you, there's the material. You want your plot? There it is. And tell your, tell where yeah. you are. You know? I have a lot of friends, some friends in the music industry that as well, they're like, man, I just don't know where to start. And I was like, well, that's mm. exactly what you need to mm -hmm. just talk about. Just yep. talk about not knowing I, where I, to start. I, I probably sound like a really annoying person because everybody I meet, you know, I have my day job is editorial and producing for television. I've been doing it for 20 years. And every single producer I ever work with, every single editor I ever talk to, every single assistant editor, assistant producer, production assistant that comes in my bay, I always tell them the same thing. When you're starting your YouTube channel. Yeah. Because I wish somebody had said that to me 10 years ago. Yeah. Because right now I have a feeling I'd have a lot more subscribers. I mean, just by virtue of time, yeah. I would have a lot more subscribers than I have. And, and it's like, if you're not doing that, if you're not producing content, I mean, I sound like Gary Vee. I now have 10 <laughs> strains of content for every single person in your audience. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, God. Right in my ear. <laughs> Think I'm a monitor. Oh, my God. That was a good impersonation. <laughs> no, right? yeah, we, good. we do sound like a broken record just oh. because I wish I had kind of um, figured it out kind of a little bit sooner. I think when you, when you don't grow up in it, it's hard to really get it, especially if you're not – I mentioned this in, in the video I'm, I'm actually I'm shooting just now before we started about how I, I needed to really understand when I really became a, like a fan yeah. of YouTubers. That's yeah. when I started to go like, oh, this has become my source of yeah. entertainment. And what's funny is for four years, I was signed to a project that was a little ahead of its time. It was an interactive mm -hmm. web series. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. And they were they were kind of teaching me all these things about the analytics of and the statistics. And right. I remember just sitting there going, it was just <laughs> like going right over my head. Like in my mind, I was just thinking, okay, when do I get to get in the studio? Like, <laughs> like I didn't get it. I just didn't. And it, it, you would, I I feel so silly because it's by no means it, it's not new. You know, I'm so late to the party. But how liberating it is because as a creator, you know, and music, for example. Uh, most oftentimes, unless you kind of get smart early, yep. um, to get an opportunity, you kind of have to sign a bit of yourself away, right? So That's someone right. owns either ownership of your masters mm -hmm. or your publishing or, uh, you know, whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, so they, there's always this thing of like it belonging to someone else. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of really legitimately the first time where I feel like I have this playground <laughs> to kind of play in and it's, it's like all ours, you know, like I don't yeah. have to yeah. well, that's worry about somebody kind of putting yeah. their hand in it. All the time. the well, absolute number one reason to do it is just not having, you know, anyone telling you or dictating to you what you should be doing or, I mean, yeah, I don't think it's about seeing it as like, well, oh, I have this business opportunity. No. Like, no, it's just about like, oh, I have this playground and I yeah. get to meet other friends who do the same thing. Like we get to play in the same sandbox. Exactly. How cool is that? You know, like, and that, and it's, it, and it's all ours. It's yeah. more personal now than it's ever been. And I always tell people, you know, if you watch a TV show at the end, as you will know, there's two minutes of credits. But now we're all those credits into one person, you know, and it is a lot of work. It's, right. And I compare it to somebody like Molo Railway guys who spend a ton of money, ton of research and a ton of work that they're not making money off of, but they still take it very professionally in the work that they do, even sure. though it's not a business per se. They still have that love to detail, that love to put out good content, that love to to make things shine on here. It is a lot of work to get noticed on YouTube because you're with a billion channels and mm -hmm. you need to put your best foot forward, but it can be fun doing that. The analytics are fun. It sounds geeky when I say that, but I, we love that. We dig into them. Oh, it absolutely is. We dive. <laughs> Imagine, you know, back in the day with the record business, uh, you didn't have that. Like yeah. you didn't know somebody was gonna like an artist. So you spend, I used to, I remember seeing it at the offices in New York that you would have these bins of cds let's just say at that time um that and i'd be like what are they going to do with that and like oh they're taking it to the dumpster because yeah. just that artist flopped in the first week didn't work out yeah. next like yeah. we just and those were budgets of half a million dollars yeah you exactly you exactly and, I, and now it's like you know they know if something's gonna work because it's already working <laughs> they have the the, 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 the world's yeah, biggest market tester right in their hands exactly so <laughs> yeah. it's kind of it's an you're right it's not nerdy it's fun <laughs>
it's it, fun to actually have the marketplace tell you in advance if what you're doing has any value. Yeah. And because of the fact that I've been creating for a living for so long, I think um, that's why I'm kind of patient with it. And I don't kind of, you know, right. uh, like maybe a nasty comment won't really get under my skin anymore right. or like, <laughs> although people have been really gracious up until this point, but obviously the, yeah. the, the, I, the possibilities start increasing. Of course, morning. the more you get noticed, the but, more chances. Like, yeah. And aside, or like how slow the growth is or mm -hmm. like, I'm just kind of like, I just gauge like, do I think people there's potential for people to be into this? Well, let's see if, well, let's try this, you know? And, and I think that's part of the fun, you know, letting them tell me what sucks. And what's good it, or not. it is exactly. <laughs> it, you can judge, you can actually adjust your content. You don't have to be somebody new. Um, travels with Bruce. He, uh, that we had him on as a guest. And like he said, he would go on, he talks about cruising and he would talk to uh, everybody for 30 minutes, then talk about what he had to talk about. And finally, a couple of the guests said, listen, we love you. We don't have time to stay around. So we're missing all the important content. So just a change by that, he mm -hmm. talked about the content first and then the hello is after, changed his whole channel around and he grew exponentially because he catered to both groups. Something so yeah. small, you know? Right. That would have been very hard to do before. And production. You know, the way entertainment was. Yeah, it was, you were stuck. Yeah. You had no say into it anyways half the time. <laughs> with some yeah, guys that true. never went to the concerts, never knew you, some exec sitting there in a black suit in the corner was just, mm -hmm. this is the formula. I did it for the Beach Boys, it's gonna work again. You know, and that was, yeah. it was a very disconnected system sometimes. Like but that. it also, yeah. I find it changes much quicker too. Like the trends yeah. are, are going, going, going all the time. It's not like it, well, now it's a year, it's gonna be this, and next year is gonna be something else. It's almost changing all the time. Like, and you're gonna be on top of it how do you do that how do you do that in music business nowadays and how do you do that on youtube oh man i think you have to <laughs> make sure you're surrounded by at least uh, one or two younger people <laughs> <Because> <laughs> my students are like you mean you haven't heard this song and i'm like yeah sure i haven't heard it like, uh, and i think you just have to kind of try to consume you know like just yeah. kind of be aware like watch the people that are in the yeah. know i admit i my fingers not really on the pulse anymore so i've got to go to who's is You're so old. well i'm just you know maybe <laughs> <laughs> i just feel like you know i have to be realistic I, I i can't go around saying the same words i was saying <laughs> in the 90s <laughs> and still be considered cool that's right oh, my parents that's where they go my parents yeah right? uh, <laughs> Sparky 107 was just commenting about how funny that was. <laughs> I'll just show oh, that was funny. thanks. Yeah, they're a trip. They actually just moved up north of, in the state, so it'll be a little harder to get them on the channel, but Aww. I'll have to go over there and just shoot a bunch of content with them. They yes. were very so funny. I'm lucky oh, my to have God. Them. <laughs> they were so funny. Your dad was so into it, and, yeah. and like the yeah. look in your mom's in eyes ham. was in like, "What oh. is he doing?" <laughs> I've been lucky that they uh, half the stuff they don't understand what's going on. But yeah. they, whatever I do, they're like, "Yes, we support you." I mean, I'm yeah, really, they're extremely supportive. Very That's lucky amazing. that way. That is a great thing to have in life. <laughs> Not everybody can Absolutely. say that. So. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Do you, Do you have your sense of humor from your dad, Eliza? <laughs> I sent them the link, so they might be watching right now. They just probably don't know how to comment. We plead uh, the fifth. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna say, yeah, <laughs> a solid yes, yeah. I, no. <laughs> I don't know. I he's, just think I'm just foolish. Oh probably. my god. <laughs> do you, do you mind? You know what though? Honestly, he's he's a, like a silly guy. Like he he's silly. silly. Yeah, he's not afraid to so be I feel silly. Like you, Maybe My mom's quick with the one-liners yeah, too. She's yeah. got a little, she's got that little, yeah. that little wit about her. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I just, uh, I'm just a big goof. <laughs> Uh, do, do you I mind, guys, uh, uh, to talk a bit, a little bit about growing up? Uh, I, I know your <laughs> parents uh, came over to the states uh, uh, from uh, Cuba. Uh, so Cuba. I just, yes. yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just wondered if you could uh, talk a little bit about that, and then absolutely. Well, b uh, both of our families came from Cuba around the same time, roughly. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know if you want to talk about it a little first. Or yeah, I mean, you know the politically charged climate of the 19, you know, late 1960s, uh, Castro was taking over in Cuba, uh, and they had like an exodus, like a mass exodus, like the, you know, middle class kind of families, the people who had the means kind of got out. 
Uh, and, so, and sometimes they had to stagger their kind of escape, so to speak. And my dad was sent over by his parents uh, to Florida when he was 16 years old. Was he Pedro Pan? Pedro Pan. Yes, yeah, so the Peter Pan program. Right, where um, they would, yeah, send the kids first. They'd send the kids oh, first wow. to get them out of the country. And then the parents would follow whenever they could later. And my mom and her parents, my grandfather was a doctor, and he got in, he got embroiled in some, uh, you know, some controversy because he was treating patients that were on both sides of the quote unquote the revolution, right? right. So because he's a doctor, takes a Hippocratic oath, you know, uh, he's not going to turn away a patient in need. Yeah. Ends up having to leave Cuba, yeah. uh, and my mom was nine. So my mother and my and there and that and my mom and her parents went to Chicago, which is my where... family ended up in Chicago as well. I was born oh. in Chicago. Oh, in fact, oh, I didn't know <laughs> so, that. Yeah, well, I mean, I grew what? up. What? Because say you didn't know something? <laughs> oh no, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can't I'm believe so you didn't know something. I'm shocked. Oh my God, that was good. It's over. It's over. Steve, Steve, cut, cut it. Cut the power. <laughs> We're messing with you. Um, so yes, a little tiny fun fact. I don't really rep Chicago because I grew up in Miami. So, oh my know, God. Uh, <laughs> so it's hard for me to say I'm from there. But yes, yes, I, I was born in Chicago. So yeah, same, similar story. Uh, my parent, my mom was about uh, I don't know maybe ten. Correct right. me if I'm wrong, mom. I want to say like maybe nine or ten. My <laughs> my dad was maybe about uh, yeah eleven or twelve, twelve maybe. Um, right. And they, you know, Miami first. At that time, they would find uh, try to find jobs, you know, in other big cities, industrial cities, where you could get a work, so everybody wouldn't be congested in Miami. And their families both coincidentally ha- ended up in Chicago. They met in high school there. Right. Um, and so I had my sister. I have one older sister, which is the the daughter's the one you saw in the video. My niece Nina Simone, she's, who's in the chat yeah. right now. I think I saw her pop up. Uh, oh, and, um, she's a fantastic. And voice. then, uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, she's Confirming that the in laws are I'm watching. Very proud. Of her. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Pedro <laughs> How are you? Hopefully, my mother in laws on too. Um, so, and then uh, my my an older sister, and then when I was born, went back to Miami. But uh, oh. that being said, yeah, that the it's an interesting thing because you grow up still with the i guess you could say it's a diluted version of the cuban culture right but you're but you're at least in my family i remember them wanting to keep it preserve it Mm -hmm. but they also never wanted me to feel not american you know i don't know if that makes sense because of the fact that it was such a hard transition for them and it's hard to be accepted they were made you know made fun of when they couldn't speak the language right away or because for being different in yeah. chicago in the 60s they looked at uh, as giving you benefits towards your life in in america was by doing that uh, keeping yeah, you so they, they wanted us to kind of not only just be proud of the fact that you were born there but uh or here rather but um but but the fact that we um could kind of keep some of the culture but mm-hmm. blend in and just right and be, if i mean on my right. channel there's a there's very What's little it? of that kind of cultural thing just because obviously the the nature nature of my my content right but on her channel we do have elements of that i think is yes yeah Yeah, i I definitely wanted to come from just a place of people getting to know my life so i try to just tell stories i know yes i I don't force the whole like cuban culture thing unless it's just something i can relate to honestly so a lot of those things actually come from real experiences Mm -hmm. yes that is that is a very uh over the top exaggeration of my parents. They're not exactly like my no. no. who are the characters. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but most like, characters that's why I created that video. They're caricatures but, of them, like you know, like, they're yeah. in, you know inspired and they're, by and they're combinations, right? Of, of different course. people. Yeah, different, like it's yeah. just kind of uh, inspired by our upbringing and growing up in Miami. You know, we came back to Miami. I grew up here. You do you did yeah. have you were surrounded by a lot of other Cuban and Cuban American families where you would just uh, kind of. Find you know you, the things that you find funny about growing up in that culture. Yeah. Like everybody has it, you know, in their own their own culture. So I, I always inject a little bit of that. I also do not want to alienate audiences right. uh, to a point where the joke is like hard to understand if you're not from the culture. But I think across the board, most people can kind of relate to a lot of the things like the yeah. jokes. And, and it's good that you said that because that's what does get lost, and sometimes it gets too attached to the culture to the point that anybody not inside the culture is missing part of the humor. Mm-hmm. And right. I think you've worked really well at keeping it relatable, you know, well, the nuances of, that, of it, but families are families as well, you know. Sure. Part of that is subtitles. <laughs> yeah. Subtitles help whenever there's a Spanish word or whatnot. 
Uh, but I think, yeah, I think a lot of it is just a cultural thing, you know, that transcends a specific culture, right? Yes. It's like if you came from a fam from a family where, you know, parents are too involved, well, then you're going to relate to that episode where we talk about that. Right. You know? Very true. So. No, it's great storytelling and that and very, uh, very accessible. And, and that's off to you for that. And I was thinking that through some of them because it is funny like that. I never lost the joke. You right. know what I mean? Oh, or, or, or uh, you know, felt disconnected from it because of that. You had a really good mix in there. So good. That's good, great. Good, good well, it's guys. interesting because I bounce, you know, I bounce scripts off of him um, and mm -hmm. he'll kind of check me if he's like, is that like only a Miami thing? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that there's any wrongs, but maybe I have a couple of those things slip in there. But I do, I, we do make it a point to be aware. Yeah, yeah, I think we, you know, as obviously we're trying to preserve the free and easy feel, right? Yes. But the decisions always tend to be intentional. Yeah. Like the choices are very manicured. Yeah. You know, like these, <laughs> very, very specific. Very deliberate. Know? Yeah. For... Exactly. Exactly. That, that That's like Xenia coming from Latvia. And <laughs> God love her. Sometimes especially she gets tired. She starts trying to translate expressions. And I get so mad. <laughs> it's rough. It's tough. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's some videos mm -hmm. like sometimes where like, the, for instance, there's the, the, the Cuban therapist video where maybe that specific video, which I, I mean, I love, but to me, it's like, you know, a window into to my cultural kind of past, but yeah. that one maybe doesn't carry over as much as other ones might. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, no, I was Call back later. <laughs> yeah, same here. I forgot to shut mine off. She was giving me the water. Yeah, no, it's on some vibrant. It's yeah. smooth. We'll get to it. Sorry. No. <laughs> no, but, uh, but yes, what were, you, what were you saying? I, I don't know. <laughs> well, that was like us with it. it. We, we thought about doing uh, sometimes a bit more video on that. I would love to more, but I guess we bring in enough in our live streams. And yeah, sometimes uh -huh. we'll get laughing at each other. And I'm wondering if you make fun of it all the time. Yeah. What are you going to make another video about it? So. Uh, <laughs> I do it because I love every live stream. <laughs> She comes up and she gets tired and then she's like, you know, I always remember if the toaster flies sideways across the bay, the moose will always laugh at you. And it's just <laughs> yeah, there's some things that are really just, <laughs> yeah. they only make sense in the language. Yeah, right? yeah, like that, exactly. That happens all the time. And there, it's so funny because even though English is technically my first language, um, I will sometimes think about a phrase that only works in Spanish and then I'm like, I don't know how to explain that. that. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes yeah. the comedy comes from that, right? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. You, sure. sometimes you can say the translated phrase and it's funny, yes. funnier. Exactly. It doesn't make sense. That's yeah, right. I'll try, to, I'll try to subtitle in the subtitle. I'll put something like, uh, this means blah, blah, blah in right. Spanish. Right. <laughs> like Something so people can kind of get it. And the subtitles do help. That makes it even funnier, by the way. That's the part of it. Because <laughs> it adds that bit of distance to it as well, which makes that funny. You know, it almost makes something that we would have probably heard already but because it's there it just adds to the humor sometimes as well so it helps and it also <laughs> well, adds to humor to too so. uh, yeah. I, I gotta say we have a viewer here uh, that has his birthday and he's been very patiently waiting <laughs> Oh yeah, we're down to um, moving yes. over to the chat. No, 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 no. Enough about us. We usually yeah, no. <laughs> we have a tradition here. We usually sing "Happy Birthday." He came in late, but I'm thinking since you're here tonight, oh, if maybe okay. you could sing Not "Happy you. Birthday." You're talking to me clearly. That's <laughs> right. Yes, I'd be happy to you sing "Happy Omar Birthday" to, sing your, happy to your birthday. viewer. Yes. He'll he'll pop out of a cake. He'll do the whole thing. <laughs> Absolutely, it? I'd love to do it. Uh, is that Who is it? Uh, Gene Bear. And Gene be, Bear. Yeah, Gene Bear. Oh, that's okay. all. Ready, ready. You get gonna get, give me a C. Mm -hmm. Give me a. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, Jean Bear, let's see. Happy birthday to <laughs> you. Don't try to harmonize. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. I'm just gonna let her do this thing. <laughs> Happy birthday. To Jean Bear, I don't know if that's one word or two, <laughs> but happy birthday to you. Oh it's my it's my birthday too and <laughs> thank you that was Anytime wonderful you know, I'll, send, I'll send you a little singing telegram oh my God, that thank was you so that awesome. was wonderful <laughs> made his day oh thank you made you him so blush much. yes 
<laughs> oh, I'm glad. Happy birthday. <laughs> that was awesome. awesome. And it uh, gave us an amazing opportunity to listen to your wonderful yes, voice. Yes. <laughs> it was uh, usually we wouldn't do it during interviews, but we couldn't pass that yes. one up. Yeah. My background <laughs> vocalist may have upstaged <laughs> me just a little bit. Try. Try. <laughs> but I try to keep up with him. It's tough. Oh, <laughs> my God. Actually, what's interesting, another fun fact is Omar is actually very musical. Um, and he edits thinking like a musician. Mm and sound designs and everything and um so in that sense we kind of have that stuff in common is that he gets it like he understands the lingo and he understands programming and music so that's a little funny thing that most people don't know about. well that's what i was saying well but editing editing and editing and music scoring and everything is so hand in hand like that's mm. so that's it's why true. i want to ask you about your background of music we talked a little bit about it in the when we uh, just lightly touched it tonight but when you started, you said you played with guitar and bass, dabbled into it. Was that mm. the first instruments that you ever got into? Yeah, I think I was like 17 or something when I when I um, bought a bass guitar. Uh, actually, I'm going to just say this to any parents, any prospective parents, anybody who might be a parent one day. If you notice your kid has an inclination for something and you, you, you see them gravitating towards maybe playing a musical instrument, maybe they want to be a writer, maybe they gravitate towards a camera and they want it to be a photographer. Foster that. Because yeah. one of the things that I always had trouble with and my parents, and you know, I love them to death. They were great people. Uh, my dad passed away. My mom is still a great person, but they didn't mm -hmm. quite understand what to do with me, right? Because right. at a very young age, I was, I, you know, I remember being like nine years old and my, my Christmas gift that year that I wanted was a Casio keyboard, the one that made all the different sounds when you press like all the buttons. And that's what I, that's mm. what I wanted. Interesting and, that it wasn't a camera, huh? And, <laughs> yeah. and kind of like the, the, the light bulb never went off, right? The light bulb never went off and the, with, with the parents where they're like, hmm, he asked for a Casio keyboard. Maybe we should get him lessons or maybe he, we should like, you know, go that down that route, and I never right. learned to play. I never to officially yeah. learned to play the piano. Right. You know. Well. So it was like one of those things where I, I finally I hit like eighteen or nineteen. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna buy my own bass guitar. I'm gonna buy my own amplifier. And, and you just kind of taught play. yourself right. how to do that stuff. Right. Yeah. So awesome. so then, but from there. I know that he showed me stuff a long time ago that he had yeah. like Brian original song. Yeah, I like did that. a lot so of it's, music. It's, in him. it's out there somewhere. Uh, oh. Ksenia, if you found that, if you found <laughs> that, then you would really deserve Researcher of the Year award consideration. Of the year. Well, uh, funny I you guess. should mention that because <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, that is somewhere. Though. Yeah, it's There's somewhere. A, oh, it a exists. YouTube channel with some oh, it Omar's exists. music. It exists somewhere. somewhere. That's going to be like a fun scavenger hunt if anyone yes. finds that. Yeah. Tweet, it, tweet it at all of us and let us know if you find that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's kind of how it started. He's oh. But he's mostly self-taught, not to be speaking for you, but I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> he's mostly self-taught in most things. Yeah. Like when I found out the story, I always thought Omar went to film school. Because I was like, I kind of couldn't imagine that he had just like kind of taught himself all these skills that he had. This is um, true. And he, I turned out he was an English major. Mm. And when he told me the story, I was like, wait a minute, you what? <laughs> like, <laughs> obviously, you know, you can, it, it all intertwines. Mm -hmm. But I was, it's just kind of um, in him. I, I envy that a little where he just kind of like, I'm going to learn that. That's what happened with, with the cards, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what happened. He came to me one day and he was like, I'm fascinated by cardistry and card collecting. I want you to see something. He starts showing me all these oh, like yeah. YouTubers that do that. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start collecting and I want to learn some of this cardistry. And I was like, one thing you never want to do is either laugh at him or tell him Don't he can't do yeah. something because he's going to come around swinging. Like he's not going to mess around. So I just, of course, obviously I'm, I'm, I, uh, what's the word I'm going to give her support right. any of his support. endeavors. So I was just like, uh, Okay, cool. But my but my first thing was, they make that many cards that you could collect them? Right. And he was like, do they? And now we have <laughs> like those two cabinets that cabinet there. and there. that cabinet full. Oh, by the way, guys, that's the cat in the corner. That's our cat, Shakespeare. Oh, it's on this, on this Shakespeare. Oh, there. Right, right oh, yeah. Yeah. Shakespeare. oh, look, you're looking at the card now. That's yes. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very well shot, by the way. It just Thank uh, you, thank you. Thank such you. a pleasure to watch. Wow. Yeah. I want to tell you And that. it is beautiful. Like yeah. when I was watching it. It's kind of hypnotic, isn't it? A yes. little bit. I think that's what attracted me first to to it was like how something so so 
it just feels like common, right? Like everybody, everybody's had a deck of cards in their hand at some point in their life. I mean, you, you aren't alive until you've held a deck of cards yeah. in your hand. Well, yes. he's always been a collector you know? of things of yeah. sorts. <laughs> right. Well, I see uh, that. <laughs> and and what no, yeah. So it just kind of went with. It was something that just fit his personality that we could fit in the house because. Who went from dioramas, which were huge, oh, they were enormous. to at least cards that yeah, are. Yeah, it's funny. Earlier, you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned like model railroad, uh, yeah, artists or people who make model railroads. I used to make one six scale dioramas. Oh, cool! Wow. Massive. And also, I don't know if Ksenia's done her research on that. <laughs> There's another video. Don't about let him that. mess with you anymore. He does this to me all day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> now I feel unprepared. So oh, no, what's no, better? No. <laughs> <laughs> actually I, I was uh featured mm. on a commercial for amc on um with my dioramas that i had created <laughs> this is true and really they came down to amc came down because at the time that was at the height of the walking dead breaking bad Mad Men kind of moment in the the capsule of amc and he'd made dioramas and i had made three. dioramas of all three and they were you know they saw these dioramas one of the guys the editor for the promo house had had huh. stumbled across them on on like in the on the web just pictures of these things right and through that they contacted me and they came down and they shot a commercial and, and so everything cool. it was pretty fun yeah, yeah and you fun. still get dates after that. <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were going to say something when the video where he has the card uh, t-shirt on i thought that <laughs> yeah. i i love i just love that yeah <laughs> Uh, no, was... yeah, we finally, yeah, the the dioramas actually helped pay for a lot of the camera gear. Yeah. So thank you for yeah. that collection. Yeah. yeah, paid off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of work too. I I don't know it as well, but I have seen people do it in the di diorama sector. I mean, that is a lot yeah, of work. It's pretty wild. It's people yeah, it was, who are associated it was fun with detail. For a while, but it, it yeah, it was definitely, and it was it's a very like lonely kind of yes, you know, yeah. hobby. But that's where but, we've had guys on the do model trains, and that's been the great advent of YouTube and live streaming that lonely art in the basement all the time and meeting up once a week at a club has now become like a guy's night out. And yeah. each one is like hosting it from their, their layouts while the other guys watch and you know, they're chatting back and forth. Right, right, it's, right. it's built a whole right. new yeah. turn on the community. Yeah, that's absolutely true. It's no longer so lonely now mm -hmm. with social media. And <laughs> exactly. Streaming. Cause it was, Well, that, that's definitely what led over to, um, to the the card channel yeah. and, and it's been really cool to fun to watch and mm. i've learned a ton and mm. um it's a really cool community of collectors and and, and fascinating designs by some incredible uh, designers and uh it's a really cool world and i think what's cool about it is hopefully people who stumble upon the channel who didn't even know this was like a thing right could get into it you know yeah I, you yeah know, i always say there are two kinds of people this yep. is my motto. The two guys of people, the the playing card enthusiast and the person who doesn't know they're, they're playing cards they're playing cards enthusiasts. I love that. You know? That's so, a that's a very I good actually, way to put it good. I had mm. set it aside where oh I actually this was kind of fun. I'm gonna disconnect for one second. <laughs> this oh. is my deck that you gave me. So yeah, so I've slowly kind of been I've tried to practice, I'm terrible. I'm not gonna try to post any move, <laughs> but this was my the last episode was about this Valentine's yes. 52 de yeah. <laughs> decks of Valentine's cards that he gave me, uh, which I thought was pretty clever. That was. So, yeah, I've gone um, kind of finding my own appreciation for. That, that was very smart, by the way. <laughs> that was really smart. I, I, I give you full props on that one. That very was Thank you. Romantic. <laughs> very romantic. Why? Too. Thank you very much. <laughs> <He's so funny. laughs> yeah. No, but it's cool because now, actually, this oh, March. Funny. There's going to be the parlor is launching, which is. It is my my first, first playing cards project. Uh, it's going through Kickstarter. So we're pretty excited about that. You yeah, know? it's a collaboration kind of, with Stockholm 17, I think you. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Yay, he's based point in, for me. in Stockholm in Sweden. <laughs> we have a dog, too. Yeah, he's a Sorry. Dog. <laughs> and um, there he is. Hey. I Hey. Sorry, we figured if we didn't let them in, they were going to cry. No, oh, no, we no. love pets. I mean, the cat doesn't care. He doesn't like us that much. <laughs> they always make for good watching. We love when the yeah. pets get in. They always yes. add to it. So Let them wander. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But what, I'm sorry, what were you saying? No, oh. it, it's so, yeah, the, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. Oh, Lorenzo's getting around in, to the uh, whole thing of like YouTube and, and having the monetization aspect, you know, like you don't have to be a big channel. That's right. 
uh, to monetize. Yeah, but I think it's you know? more to it than that. I think it's about it's watching uh, the brand come to yeah. life. Yeah. You know, it's not just about pushing it, it, product. No, yeah. it's watching the brand come to life and um, evolve into other things. I think it's a pool. And as a as a creator and a visual artist, um, I think it's just fun to see ideas kind of turn into these right. multi faceted things well it's the ultimate control over doing it it's like a gardener like you know you kind of get this from the seeds to the harvest is all in your hands and it's kind of yeah. fun i was like i work for a big company as well and you don't have all that control so it's not a god complex but it's kind of fun once in a while to have that where you kind of see it through from beginning to fruition you know you're kind of sure. walking along the way absolutely it's really you know? <laughs> wants to be included in not a problem look <laughs> at the face you guys have any questions for him yeah i have any questions yeah oh look at that <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm wondering um, when he's going to get his yeah, own it's, channel. It's definitely, it's exciting just because, um, yeah, there are just other avenues, other cre other avenues for creativity. Yes. So that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And there's so many opportunities. And like some people will say, oh, well, I don't want to monetize. I just want to monetize. Even if you don't just have the access to a rep because you can have trouble with your channel and all those things. And you right. do get a bit of a boost sure. when you do it. If you, you can't have it all be writing on just that either. Yeah. No, you know? exactly. I mean, obviously, look, uh, would we love to be able to, not that we don't love what we do, we love what we right. do, but we'd love to dedicate 100% of our time to yeah. channels. I mean, ultimately, that's the goal, right? I mean, we have this little of dream, dream yeah. of, like, just making this house that we could shoot in every room yes, of. And, yes, <laughs> yes, know, yes. Being very self-contained, yeah. and um, that would be, you know, the dream goal. So, obviously, you think about ways that you have to be able to well, yeah, exactly. You know, so of course it kind of goes hand in hand, but, um, but it's really just about having ideas and watching them become something that mm -hmm. makes all the hard work worthwhile. Well, it's a creator's paradise. It really is because yeah. the sky is the limit. And plus you're meeting new creators. It's so much easier. Years ago when you're talking like for music, if you want to collab with somebody, I mean, that was almost unheard of. And it was a process mm -hmm. could last years to make happen. Now, oh, absolutely. you can connect with somebody in a couple of days. You know what? Hey, let's make this happen. Sending tracks over and a week yeah. you got a video out. That's what's so cool about it is the, 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 the uh, connectivity is so much higher now. Absolutely. Well, as, you, as you guys may have noticed with the, the one Christmas episode, I'm slowly starting to pull in some of my musician friends. Yes. 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 For the comedy. That, uh, <laughs> that, that's very good, by the way. That's really smart. Uh, well, it's been fun because um, they get a kick out of, it's funny, Janet, the one character, Janet, who has the big curly hair, I feel like she's the one who makes it all happen. Yeah. Because if I call and ask, they'll be like, yeah, Liza, I'll let you know. But Janet has a lot of pool. <laughs> no one says no to her. Is so. it your alter ego coming out? Or like <laughs> Perhaps. You know what's <laughs> interesting, though? I, and you've mentioned this to me, too. Uh -huh. It's like you, that you felt that it disarms people to a certain degree. Like, like they... Like whenever it was that you as Liza Quinn wanted to collaborate, it was harder. It was a harder, it was a more obstacle. Maybe. I mean, look, it's, I think what it is is not so much that because I've, I've been lucky enough to have some amazing colleagues who've been really supportive and, you know, always <laughs> answer my calls and, um, and have been very gracious with me. And I think it's because they know that I put in the work mm -hmm. and that I have a strong work ethic, you know? Yep. Um, and I always come through. Yep. Yeah. I'm reliable. But I think what it is is that it's just a different avenue yeah. that some people have always kind of wanted to explore but maybe didn't know how to. Yes. So they get this chance to kind of like mm -hmm. play with these characters and do this other thing that's not just what we're used to. And I think that's Very the appeal. Point. Um, and actually, uh, it also helps when the, the collaborators really into social media content. Yeah. So my friend Tony Suka actually has built an incredible following on social media. He's got about 200K on Facebook, uh, about 90K on uh, YouTube. YouTube. And he's he gets he gets the beauty in creating for all these outlets. So he's more than just just the kind of one-dimensional. Yeah, position. and I mean, for us at the time, I think maybe you had, what, 450 subscribers? Yeah, he gave yeah. me a great bunch of traffic like, and uh, was yeah. so gracious with us in his time wow. and all those musicians coming together. So, yeah, I think... There, the fact that we understand each other on a creator level helps, and yep. I think the fact that it's a different kind of thing it is. is fun, you it, know. Um, and like I said, it's it's Janet. She's she's got a lot. Of <laughs> 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 and to answer your question, yes, all my characters are a little bit alter. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, and it's funny because in in when you're when you're studying theater, um, they they'll often tell you that if you make a character too far from yourself, 
um, it's hard to relate yeah. and, and, and it, it becomes a caricature. Yeah. But if you take a little piece of yourself that's kind of a part of that character and amplify it, yeah. it's suddenly just yeah. an extension of yourself. I recognize so parts of those characters in her and her name <laughs> yeah. conversation. Even the male ones. Yeah, okay, like she'll say a line and it's like, hmm, was that Jerry who said that? <laughs> it comes out. I'm pretty I mean, sure that was Dr. Ramirez I was just talking to. <laughs> Can I talk to Yannick for a second? It's kind of like... Yeah, I, I, I will definitely say they're extensions of you. Well, Just that's what a lot of people struggle with on YouTube, and that actually comes up a lot in that conversation. Do I become a character? Do I be myself? And I always tell people, the only real unique thing left on YouTube is you, because everything has kind of been done to a certain extent. So sure. nobody else can be you, and it, but you have to accentuate you. And if you're that type of person that says, yeah, I like that, when you're on here, it's like, yeah, I like it. you got to accentuate those little nuances, but still be true uh, to your Yeah, friend. that's good advice. And actually, yeah. funny thing is, I didn't go into it with a conscious choice to do the characters at first. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what my channel was going to be. I, I, I've always I had mean, an we, interest we in... We still don't know, really. Well, <laughs> well Constantly. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. never really know where it's headed, but um, but it wasn't like a cut where I said I'm gonna make a sketch comedy channel and I'm gonna develop these characters. I did always love to develop characters, right. but that just kind of happened because it was easier to play all the roles right. than to try to find collaborators at first. Necessity yeah. always creates great things. And it was just more efficient. I yeah. knew that in one day I could shoot everything I needed to shoot if I just right. played everybody myself. Right. So, so awesome. he one day and was then, just like, why yeah. don't you just play all the characters? Yeah, and then to me it was like a challenge because I wanted to figure out ways that I could put five versions of her in the same shot mm. and still keep the camera moving um, what episode was that? That like was the, the breakup friends. The breakup friends. Stuff like your breakup of, friends. Tell friends tell you after breakup. And yeah. we did this. I did this moving shot on a, on on a motorized slider. slider where there's nice. five versions of her interacting and it's all timed. Uh, and all that was a of, doozy. We learned yeah. a lot from that because there were pillows on the sofa. Yeah. And, and they were like moving. painstakingly rotoscope. So he had to like, yeah, rotoscope each little. Oh, it yeah. was tough. <laughs> We learned a lot. We're like, take the pillows. <laughs> but you, but that's oh, the way did. you learn. But I think yeah. that was also for him. He loved the challenge. He was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do a slider shot of all, you, all yeah. of you, all five of you in one. And I was like, oh, boy. This is cool. And it's a challenge for me playing off of no one. You know, right. so um, that's also a fun challenge for me. Well, now, mind you, I don't in any way, you know, people ask me like, so are you, you're an actress then? And it's, <laughs> it's hard for me to accept the word right now because i have so much respect for the craft right um that it's like you know hold on let me get let me get my feet wet again <laughs> let me kind of get back into you know um the craft of first because i it's hard for, you know right now i'm just kind of creating i'm storytelling is what i'm doing you know let me i'll get there <laughs> but, but um it's been so many years that I, I i wouldn't just expect to just show up and be like i'm here <laughs> i'm an actress <laughs> You know, but at the same time, too, it's opened up like the, the, the level of what it fall like the categories themselves have opened up because of YouTube. And, there's uh, you yeah. know, it kind of made it e more approachable. Like you say, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. You didn't go to Second City or something like that. But, right. But it doesn't mean that your work doesn't matter anymore. You can. Mm -hmm. And anybody out there does have a right to call themselves kind of an actress, I would say, in a way. And there's different right. levels like in anything else because you are sure. doing sure. it. You have an audience, a production. Sure. sure. I would like to, I am the kind of person that I think if I were to continue to dive deeper into this and do it full time, I would like to kind of go back and even as a vocalist, I mean, I, I coach now and I still think to myself like, man, so-and-so I would love to study with for a little while and kind of brush up on this. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't think you ever stop learning. Yeah. But I would love to kind of go back and kind of, you know, do some improv again and, you know, kind of jump back into playing off of other people and studying with other directors mm -hmm. who, you know, come from the theater or from an improv background and just kind of, you know, um, absorb that stuff again. I think uh, I would love that actually. I think well, that'd be great. So it's in my plans too. I sure. love you, but I still will say that you are an actress. So I'm saying it right now. Which ah, way here you, deemed you. actress. Well, I agree. Yes. I'm, I agree. I'm working thank hard you. every episode to, you know, uh, put my best, intentions forward and um put a lot of love and care into the characters and the yeah. stories so hopefully you know if that counts for anything i always tell people look at your numbers there's somebody out there that really likes what you do and that's open to any channel even if they only have 20 subscribers and there's three watching there's right. three people that are impressed enough with what you do to come back and watch another time around so you've earned what you've got you know well i want to say a special thing. thank you to karen oh yes 
Yes, who's been so wonderful and obviously made this connect with us today and is one of the kind of the people who's always there kind of championing me and reminding me to keep going. Like, don't ever get discouraged. I love it. Uh, you know, and keep it going. So I think that really, you know, definitely makes it also worthwhile. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's amazing yeah, relationships you can build here. You know, yeah, it's so absolutely. Connected. I have man, I have some people that I have been friendly with since I toured with Ricky Martin as a backup singer back in 06, I want to say amazing. maybe around there. Uh for a uh, maybe a roughly like maybe about half a year. I did uh two legs of the tour and uh and a and an MTV unplugged. And I um I, I actually moved on to that to do that web series that I told you and right. that's why I didn't stay in the band. But I um in that time, I made some friends that had been following me on like MySpace, you know, and have are still to this day we're still friendly on social media, and we haven't like we've maybe met once. I was lucky enough to meet them once, like at one of the shows. But uh, people who followed me since the one single I had this one single with this uh, artist called El General, who's like a pioneer in reggaeton. Mm. People who followed me since then, like back in '06, that I'm still friendly with. So mm -hmm. I do Amazing. feel like I've made like almost lifelong friends through the power of uh, social media. It's proof, pretty cool. The proof is in the pudding. You're still connected and all that, which is uh, so awesome. Well, <laughs> I, I think it's important to I always appreciate the people who were there with me from the beginning of something. Yep. So I will be the one to be like, oh, it's their birthday. I got a happy, you know, I'll do I my, obviously some, some things might slip through the cracks. I don't claim I'm perfect at it. No. I think it's hard to keep up with, but I really go out of my way to like follow back and support and try to um, just say, just show my gratitude because mm. honestly, it's like, I, I, there are some days where I just wake up and I'm just like, I'm so, I'm just so lucky. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I just feel so lucky. Like, I'm just so, wow. You, you mean you sat back and you took five minutes to watch that? Like, that's awesome. You know, like, it, thank you. You know, and I think having that gratitude is, is important. It really gives you perspective. We've pushed that yeah. from the beginning on YouTube because that's one of the, you can look at it as a downfall or a plus, but either way, now that we are so connected, it is also more reciprocal from the, 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 the entertainer to com to to keep connected with the audience as well. Years ago, yeah. it was such a one-way street just because there was no connect. You did your show, you were put in a car, you were gone. But now with YouTube, it is so important to keep in touch with the people that watch you. Uh, yeah, if you didn't have the capacity before to answer every like little handwritten. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but now, absolutely. There's yeah. just, I mean, obviously as things grow, like I said, it gets hard, but, but you have to make it as part of, a part of your schedule to take the time because honestly sometimes i don't even know how to express he's getting aggressive <laughs> how to express um my gratitude like i'm like how many exclamation <laughs> points do i have to put after this thank you like <laughs> because that. it's just so, it's like oh it, it's bursting out of me sometimes because i just feel like uh -huh. you know as creators anytime anybody just either feels something or gets something out of what you're doing it's like oh, yeah yes <laughs> It, you get, it gets you through those awesome. times, those times you have Absolutely. writer's block, the times when things didn't go well. You'll feed off of those all the time. They are like uh, Yeah, reserved. actually this happens to you guys too. I mean, everybody has that moment of, I've had this in the past, like, am I crazy? Yeah. Like, am I? <laughs> you know, you start questioning. Yeah. Everybody. Oh, I'm yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah, everybody always, as if, you're, if you're an artist, you, you're not really an artist until you've questioned something. You've done. <laughs> yeah. It's very true. It and is a really doubt. true statement. <laughs> yeah. But it makes you, that's what keeps you it's getting better. Of, it's part of the, the essence of artists, yeah. right? Like, like yeah. that's part of what makes you an artist. It goes that's hand true. in hand. It's that vulnerability and being able to not be afraid to expose that, I think. Uh, yeah, those it is. And it, and those fears, you know? You do all put yourself out there. Pictures, all the, you know? Yeah, that's it's right. really kind of what it is. But uh, it, it feed off of it. I also <laughs> like that the, your work ethic, as you said before, like in, in many of your videos, you're saying it doesn't matter, you know, if it's three or 300 people watching, yeah. I just still love you all the same. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I love it because that's what we are trying to kind of to talk to our creators here that come uh, uh, every evening to watch us, that it doesn't matter how many people are watching you. It shouldn't differ of how you're doing what you're doing. And uh, yeah, and I think you can see it in your videos too and but it, why it kind of surprised me in a way after being on the big stage you know uh, and coming to this platform uh, does it feel any different in that way uh, you know being like the you know i think i'm used to starting things from scratch you're only as good as the last well-received thing that you did you right. know 
in music or in anything. So it's like, for example, um, I've never had like a Pharrell style number one smash. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No, no, I so, get what you're saying. You know, but I've had releases with hey, artists. Pharrell and... is old. <laughs> Cardi B. I... Cardi B. This is why this is so I need more young people around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Cardi. Pharrell? Cardi... Who is that? He's like ancient. <laughs> you might, might as well be dead. <laughs> Can you imagine? I, I was say I was tell to, just to interrupt you. I was saying my uh, son that you have sang was Ricky Martin. He's like who? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear, trust me, I know. My, He's twelve. I, I'm like you I, don't know Ricky Martin. <laughs> I have one, only one. I, I I work with mostly adult singers, but I have this one eight year old who is thoroughly unimpressed. By everything yeah. I've ever done. And like she pretty much. Just like, uh, <laughs> you're so, such a dweeb. It's but, uh, yeah, pretty much unimpressed. And that's okay. Like, <laughs> La Vida Loca, yes. yes that's exactly. right. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but, yeah, but I did have, you know, um, some releases. Oh, like and in that time, I would just think to myself, like, okay, what's the next one? You know, obviously, it doesn't help that as a songwriter, you have obligations to your publishing company. So you yes. have to think about what the next one is. But, but it's that idea of like, oh, what now? And I think that never stops as yeah. a creative and whatever you do, you could have huge successes and always be starting over with whatever the next project is. Right. Um, there are times where artists might have like a flop album that nobody even knows about. Yeah. And then come out and have this other huge. So that being able to ride that roller coaster, I think is, uh, is important. Having the humility to ride the roller coaster i never think i'm above anything oh. you know like i i'm just like yeah let's start a new channel from scratch let's right. do it you know um and so yeah i think if anything he'll realize that i'm like super patient with that stuff i do think though and i think this is an important conversation now that we're talking about it i do think it's important to still listen to your audience yeah mm -hmm. like i think if they're kind of giving me back this vibe that they don't like something i'm not gonna be like well let me just wait for the you know i I kind of have to also think it's important to read them and yeah. be like, okay, maybe that wasn't my best work, mm -hmm. you know? Now, obviously, like I said before, not everyone's going to like you. My mom had this phrase in Spanish that would say, Here we go. Tu no eres billete de cien, no le vas a caer bien a todo el mundo. Like, you're not a hundred dollar bill, not everybody's going to like you. <laughs> so, um, that. So, so that was like, taught me to have thicker skin early on because I used to get really sensitive. Like I got a bad review once on tour and I was like, I think I cried for like two days. Oh, I was like, they hate me, no. they hate me so much. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> but uh, oh, I got, you know, I eventually had to learn to get over that. And um, it, that being said, I think that you, where was I going with this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pretending many, like I'm listening. I'm now. a babbler is what it is. <laughs> uh, no, thanks for spacing out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but okay, but going back to it, um, uh, we were talking about the yes, not 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 feeling like you're above it. Yeah. So with, for that, with that being said, I I admit that not everyone's gonna like maybe my style of humor or some of the content. So uh, obviously, you do eventually find people who do like exactly. and appreciate. But I learned this from being a pop songwriter. If you want it to be a sustainable thing that you can do full time. You have to appeal to a mass audience. Yes, that's right. You can't just do things only you like that's because right. you want it to be, unless you're okay with it just being a hobby, and that's totally cool. Like, I respect that, you know? Yeah. But as a writer, I started writing songs in my bedroom that I liked. Right. So when I had a publisher I had to deliver to, I realized I'm like, okay, this isn't just about me anymore. Like I have to write for masses now. Right. And that was hard for me, you know, at first. So I think about that with YouTube. I'm like, okay. If they're telling me they're not that into something, I have to kind of listen to them a little bit and see how I can course correct. But where is you that know? border uh, in, wanna, in yeah, doing the... I want to say this part because this is really important. This is something that I've been watching a lot of people battling with. People are caught in that right now because YouTube's like a new frontier and it's what a lot of artists have gone through for years. It's either do I say I'm an artist and I don't care what anybody else thinks or am I the audience and I want to appeal to everybody and everybody's got to love me. And that's the, that's the balance into it. And I tell people, you've got to stick to your core values. True. You, you can't change on that. But within that, you can find, like that Bruce uh, traveled with Bruce. He didn't change from a, tra a travel channel to a, a singing channel. He just changed the way he brought the message. But the message was there. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know, absolutely. Like the core of who I am is so, never going to change. Uh, you know, the things that I can bring to the table. Yeah. I think it's important to be self-aware, know your strengths, your weaknesses. I'm always going to try to put my 
strengths forward you yeah. know, or what I think are my strengths so but I think yeah I think it's it's a, a balance of both like I think you have to not lose your integrity and the things that you're proud of you know you want to do things you're proud of and the same thing was like I'm gonna I'm gonna compare this to writing popular music right right um I would try to to do it in a way where I could still be proud of it yeah um and still be giving the same message just delivered in a way that was easier to digest for right. more people than just a niche audience that's a great uh, way of that. looking at thank it. you yeah. that's unbelievably said that's exactly so i think that was the lesson i had to learn the hard way with a lot of banging my head against the wall <laughs> but i think once you start coming to terms with oh i like not all pop is crap yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i say? not all hollywood movies are garbage you know like not all mainstream things have to be yeah something you're not proud of so you can yeah. still do something for a mass audience and be proud of it you know that's right um there are some things on youtube i probably can't relate to like i would never start a prank channel right <laughs> With Omar, like if we're a little too old for that they'd be like no oh, the but that's a very good example <laughs> of that like, honey my teeth <laughs> I hid your dentures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, you were saying? I love that. <laughs> and that's exactly... <laughs> I haven't pooped in three weeks. I hid your laxatives. <laughs> <laughs> the old folks prank jam. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's, that's what we're going to do. Yep, yeah, exactly. We're retired and pranky. Oh, my God. You guys are awesome. <laughs> and, but that's a great way of putting it. And that's what I tell people. Like yeah. Some people will be like, they'll, oh, I'm... Uh, I don't know a card channel. Oh, look at this channel. He's doing this. He's doing fantastic. Yeah. Next week I come back. Guess what I am on this? And they're constantly. Yeah. It would be like a songwriter saying, "One week I'm a pop writer. Next week I'm a death metal writer. The next week I'm a jazz musician." You're never gonna get anywhere if you keep veering so deep. You have to pick a message, but then within that message, you can be very versatile on how mm -hmm. you spread it to the masses. And, right. And, That's yeah. absolutely true. Mm -hmm. that, so I want. I, said, I, I think digestibility. Yep. Can I say you that? Nail, that? You <laughs> nailed it. That, I think that's the key. Yep. Very well like, said. It, it's, it, palatable. Right. Mm -hmm. Palatable. He's, his his yeah. vocabulary is much more sophisticated. <laughs> Put them both together. The English fantastic. major nerd over here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but that's the. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Yeah. You don't have to change who you are. <laughs> what did I say? I just went like this. Oh. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> I think it's not changing who you are. You're right. It's just how you can make it more palatable to more people. And very well Thank said. You the that will definitely be used in song clips <laughs> down the road. Oh, yeah. So, yeah no. Oh, good. Well, I yeah. hope it helps. You know, yeah. definitely. I always try to say that. I think that's why I ended up kind of being an educator of sorts when it comes to music. It's because I, I kind of wanted to pass on the things that I learned the hard way. Yes. The things that I wish people had told me. So yep. um, if I can spare someone some of the kind of the heartache and the bruises... Well, and too, every analogy I almost always use here is reverts back to music because YouTube is like playing in a band. And, you know, mm -hmm. the 1K, 4K, I always say started like a new generation, like the, back in the 80s in L.A. And it didn't mean just because you went to L.A. you were going to be famous. And a lot of people are starting to get that. Well, if I get on a YouTube channel, I should have a million subscribers within six months and all these. And it don't work that way. And it's a lot of work. Right. And, you know, mm -hmm. there's every analogy for music almost always ties back into YouTube. I really feel there are mutual talking about Absolutely. yeah go ahead oh i'm sorry no i was just thinking that karen was asking does omar know peter mckinnon no but he'd like to <laughs> <laughs> but if i can help us make that happen that would be it's funny i have a i'm planning a, a little parody of a peter mckinnon video no I've got, I've got my peter mckinnon costume i like to call myself peter mccuban <laughs> I got my little fig beard. I got oh my little, my, my little, my little, uh, what's that called? The little top, top, what's that called? The top knot? Little top. Oh, knot. Yeah, 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 yeah. The man, man bun. bun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got my little top knot. I got my you little fake go. beard. Oh, I got my man. rings that I'm gonna wear. My fake tattoo sleeves. I'm gonna do my Peter McKinnon. My I man. always say all our. <laughs> what's up, everyone? Our costumes are gonna literally move us out of our home. Oh. Uh, we're I gonna need like a whole warehouse for costumes. I love it. That might make it happen, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I feel like people think about us like for Halloween. We hear this stuff like, "You guys got some spare costumes?" Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> but yes, um, you know, I gotta. I'm gonna figure out a way to get to Peter McKinnon at some point. Good that's for part you. of. That's on my. Yeah, goal. he's got some pretty cool that's collabs coming list. up, yes. which is funny because I'm like, how that, do you literally one degree. Up? I'm like one degree away from. <laughs> 
getting to that. He has thing. this way of just asking, like, just yeah. be like, hey, you want to do this? Good. Well, Which exactly. Really, making that yes so far. making that video and tagging him in and then including Cody Warner, which you know because right. you're <laughs> part of No Small yep. Creator, right. makes it happen right. right away. So you just have to do yeah. it. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. Well, That'd be really cool. Well, That'd Omar will appreciate this then because of Gary V a while ago. I was in his live stream the other week and a bunch uh -huh. of people were talking. And I have the mindset, well, if it's Gary V was in here, how would he act? And I seen right. a name come up with a check mark, and it's called the Salon Guy, and he's got almost six hundred thousand subscribers. And he uh -huh. wrote, "I've got a book coming out." And I'm like, "Hey, you got a book coming out? We got a live stream that we talk about people and blah blah." And by the end of that, right. we were done, and he's going to be joining us. You know, just asking politely, don't hound people, but you can really, you yeah, never know oh, to try. I, I don't. I'm. I'll hound them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's not shy. I'm I, shy. I am like, relentless. I'd be over considerate, you know? like, oh, I don't want to bother you. I'm sorry. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah. How do you think I, mar I marry this woman? <laughs> <laughs> so true. Not shy. Oh, my like God. Oh, my God. So, look at me. Look at so her. Funny. Look at me. I, I laugh because my the collaborator. Look at her. Look at me. Oh, my gosh. Look, look at me. Go look fishing, at her. Look at me. Fishing for compliments. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. When we were so, showing her pictures on another show, I was telling you guys were coming up. I was showing yours. I said, ladies, and the ladies were happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're still uh, working Aww. on attracting the female base. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. That's right. I yeah. love it. That's, that's right. <laughs> that would be great. No, but I, uh, uh, well, yeah, he's definitely better at that than I am. Oh, I, I need to get better at like asking that. Actually, the collab with Tony Suka, my, my producer friend, happened because of him. Because he was like, just ask him. Just and ask I was him. like, he's so busy. Just Poor ask. Thing. I don't want to be yeah. that person putting him on the spot. And just he's ask. like, just ask him. And he would yep. text me throughout the day, like, did you ask him yet? Did you yeah. ask him yet? Did you I ask him it. yet? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, he's, mm -hmm. he's great like that. He pushes me to be a little more adventurous that way. And it's never been more <laughs> open to do stuff like that, too. That's what's so cool because they're so much more accessible. You don't yeah. always yeah. have to reach through an agent all the well, time. Well, you know what, though? And it's funny because I think I honestly think the number one motivator for anybody to work with, with you is passion. Yes. So if you come at something passionately and, and you – you put your hundred and whatever cliche, hundred and fifty percent, even though you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. You no, put I get, all yeah. of yourself into it. Yeah. And you make it the best it can be, and you take pride in it, and you work at it, and because it takes practice. Yeah. Okay. It's not like you can be very passionate about something, but you just haven't done it enough. It's gonna be a while. Yeah. It's all of that stuff combined. Then you start to grab people's attention, and even if yeah. you have fifty subscribers, a hundred subscribers, two hundred subscribers, like. People take notice. People sit up and they're like, "Whoa, they wait a second. Yeah, that guy's doing something pretty cool. Yeah, and you know he may be new on the scene, but he won't be new on the scene pretty yeah. soon because right. he, he'll make it work. And that's what that's like. What I always tell her, it's like whenever we get discouraged because we run out of time, we don't we don't have the the energy because we're exhausted when when she's you know gone on a gig somewhere, and I'm exhausted because I worked a ten hour you know a day work week. And we don't have the time or the energy to put together the best foot forward. It's okay. And I tell her all the time, I'm like, it's just a matter of time. You know? right. I say, babe, it's just a matter of time. Like, but I believe in what we're doing. And I know I'm not the final arbiter at the end of the day that the audience is, but I believe in what we're doing. And I, and I firmly believe that people will take notice yeah. because we're putting all that energy and all that effort and all that, and all that experience into it. That's we've always I guess said all you could do is be persistent, right? Yeah. <laughs> It is. And when we started live streams, we had one golden rule for ourselves. We're not going to try to pretend we're something we're not. Like, I hate when somebody tries to pretend they're way bigger than what they are. We didn't use green screens with BBC network behind it. and mm. try, But we were always going to do the best we could do with what we had. That was the number right. one goal. Everything was going to be as professional with what we have to work with and, and grow from there. And that really is important to always put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because people will see it, do. you know? And thank mm -hmm. you, Sparky, because I didn't realize I had brought in the new Zoom window type to OBS. The cursor, uh, you have a choice if the cursor on or off, and I had it on. <laughs> I was sitting there, I have this thing, I always move my mouse, but nobody sees it, except I was going across Omar's chin. So, uh -oh. <laughs> so, you met my chiseled chin? <laughs> yeah, 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 I guess Here's so. you when talking you about being professional? Beard, perhaps. <laughs> so Sparky107 said, perhaps. move your cursor arrow, please. It's on Omar's chin. <laughs> It's been catching my eye, some of the little the little things. I want to jump in and, and, and chat, but I don't want to um, disrupt the uh, yeah, well, I have, your show. Not when I'm talking. So you guys, <laughs> so you guys, let us know. But I'm definitely oh. open to if anyone wants to chat about anything. Yeah, we have questions. I'm catching them in here, so I can yeah, uh, maybe can ask a couple. Awesome. Of them. Oh, okay. So you go like kind yeah, of accumulating. accumulating. Oh, yeah. awesome! Oh, wonderful, wonderful. 
yeah it keeps like every now and then there's like something funny that i'm like oh yeah that's funny yeah, well you <laughs> go ahead you're more than welcome oh. usually just uh, our guests well, don't have a little bit of a delay so it's oh yeah I, well i know yeah there's a little bit of a delay correct like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, but it, it's also most of our guests don't have both screens open so that's why we usually i just take the questions and we kind of go gotcha. with it but it, okay, it, go ahead great. if you see anything you want to comment on okay. you, well, you are I, the I guest actually... you can do what you want <laughs> No, no, no. As the guest, <laughs> it is your show. I don't... No, I actually just wanted to say thanks to everybody who's been tuning Watching. in because, um, yeah, we, we we appreciate you. So thank you. Obviously, you guys have a lovely um, follower base who tunes in and, and you're gracious enough to let us be a part of that. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening to us babble and be silly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not, I guess it's just, to just ramble about ourselves. Well, no, but thank you. Seriously. You are amazing guys. You are. And you, you oh, are, you. Uh, you are so entertaining and fun and, and so easy going in a good way you know like down to earth and easy going at the same time i, I, I mean we it. can't get any further down to earth believe me <laughs> <laughs> like this may look nice but it's a shamble it's falling it's apart just a wall. It's, it's a wall. fake wall it's a fake wall oh my god no but we definitely uh it's funny sometimes i think about like what things might be perceived as yeah and we are super kind of like not fancy <laughs> you know what i mean like not one bit we're, we're always working we just put our heads down and work and just like stay focused you know i think that's what is is a good interesting part about social media and what we just talked about is realizing how little again in a good way of a difference there is between people that are in a celebrity status and and like us here <laughs> regular people we had uh uh, Michael Price uh, on who is a uh, uh, head writer of The Simpsons and you know you get all, like, all, all nervous yeah. because it's a head writer of The Simpsons F is for family and all of that but you t you know once you start talking he's the same guy as anybody else yeah he, of course you know we saw that one actually yeah, we, we watched that episode that, yeah. Yeah. oh but, uh, thank you yeah by the way not on the mainstream but on our chat the camera got shifted guys I don't know if you noticed oh, oh. I did not yeah. notice Oh, the one yeah. you guys have seen us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There oh, you that go. one, yes. There you go. Now <laughs> we can see. <laughs> it says the dog let me know. The dog's like, hey, guys. <laughs> He it's just not, pops in every now and then. It's not at a very flattering angle. Unfortunately, we keep the better one for home. But at least oh, look at Karen. Karen says cool. that for her, we're real famous people. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Karen. I feel the same way. I'm hoping we'll get to meet one day. That would yeah. be awesome. Oh, yeah. But, but be that's amazing. Fun. You know, like it, everybody is kind of like, I mean, there's always, you know, uh, exceptions to the rule. But really, I was so stunned by by how down to earth people are actually when you don't think mm. just by perception of you know tabloids or whatever you read in the news it's completely different when you actually t try talking with them you know yeah it's true well I, i've been lucky enough to work with a lot of kind of big name acts in the latin music industry and i've been really impressed at how few times i've had like a negative experience yeah mm -hmm. for the most part um i've been really I don't know if I've just been really lucky, but most, but most of the people I've had the chance to work with have been so gracious and kind. And what's funny is it's, you'd see these ones that are like the most brilliant musicians and they're just these legendary people. And they're just like, hey, there's this one um, really famous, um, well, singer songwriter named Juan Luis Guerra. Um, who came from this very famous group called Cuatro Cuarenta. And he's a legend in Latin music and a brilliant musician and arranger and composer. I mean, like, j top of the top. Uh, iconic, okay? Mm. And and I remember doing um, one of those uh, Grammys. For the Grammys, they'll do, like, a Music Cares tribute. Every, yep. There's a, an honoree every year. Right. And I've uh, been in the house band a couple times, uh, lucky enough. And, and this one year he came, we were doing a tribute to Ricky Martin, and he brought all his own charts. He passes it out to everybody, went to straight to one by one to every musician, shook everyone's hand, and just said, Thank you for doing this with me. <laughs> and I remember thinking, uh, like, Is he serious? Yeah. So it's funny when I coach <laughs> up and coming artists now, I, I teach them when you walk into a room, you say hi to everybody, mm -hmm. everyone in the room, yep. shake their hand, introduce yourself, mm -hmm. acknowledge that they're there. Um, and don't be that person who just walks in and doesn't, yep. you know, acknowledge the people in the room. So learning from artists like that and seeing how they just are just just a regular. 
it's in, it is <laughs> and it is cool. inspiring like yeah. that you know that it, it and it's nice that you are teaching your students that i think it's so important especially this day and age where social media connects so much those kind of bad connections get out really quickly so it's important for mm -hmm. artists to know, to like we met uh dave mustaine from megadeth my cousin, I work for Marshall Canada, cool. and we brought my cousin backstage. He's 19, and it's his very first concert he's ever been to in his life. And I'm like, you're luckier than my first concert. But anyways. That's amazing. And, and he comes out after an hour, and everybody mobs him. I don't know him well, but I've met him two or three times. And I, my cousin went to go. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. He hates that. Give him five minutes. He's going to have enough of it. And sure enough, he was annoyed and didn't want to be bothered. And then he said, who is that over there? And I, we come over, and we, and we introduce ourselves, and he kind of remembered me vaguely. And I said, this is my cousin's first concert. And he's a born again, and he's a recovering alcoholic and all that. I think my cousin thought it was going to be like a bleh kind of, you know, oh, worship the devil. And it wasn't. He's like, he was shocked. And he goes, this, you picked me for your first concert? Oh. And he was touching. He put his hand on his heart. And my cousin didn't know what to make of all this, you know. And I'm older watching this. I think this is amazing. And he spent 40 minutes. He took my cousin backstage. They were tearing it down, walked him through. Took him to oh, the green awesome. screen, had some that is coffee so and tea. Cool. Yeah, and it was like visiting your dad, you know? It was that kind of friendly, you know? Yeah. Oh, and he was asking about his major in school, more of that kind of, like, you know, <laughs> kind of death. But like, what a That's great nice interaction. Yeah, you know? And it's just when you treat somebody as a human being, because I told mm -hmm. my cousin after that, I said, imagine if it was you and everybody just mobs you like you're, like you don't even exist as a human. You would be upset too by that, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, yeah. You know, you have to understand that I'm sure it's hard for some people that yeah. have they get that. maybe just having just like a really tough day and yep. trying their best to, you know, not show people that side, but we are human. So they might've got a call we'll that to... something's broke at home or, you know, something the kid yeah. just got in trouble. They, they live yeah. alive just like us and stuff. I've sure. heard stories of, you know, sometimes an artist about to step out to a big concert and they hear uh, some terrible tragic news about a passing in the family or, you know, they're dealing with regular life stuff. You exactly. Know? Right. Um, so I do understand that side, but I do think, you know, when you do choose kind of a public figure life, you rather have to try your best. There's a balance into it. And I think people feel, yeah, like they're not a nuisance, like, because honestly you wouldn't really have the career without them. And when you're younger, you're feeding off it because it's all new and exciting. You usually don't have family by then, but when you get the musicians that are older, by then they have families, they have established community. Sure. You know, they're not as caught into that moment. So yeah, they got to remind themselves sometimes too, that the fans yeah, are. Yeah, and I do get that some people can cross the boundaries mm -hmm. heavily too, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> to being a little oh, yeah. disrespectful. But when you, what's interesting about being an entertainer, and like I said, I've never been on that level of success or, rec you know, recognizability, but, but I do realize that even just from doing regular gigs, let's just say, people have a sense of thinking they can just say anything to you yeah, mm. or treat you any old way, like you're a piece of property yes, mm. because exactly. you're an entertainer. Yeah. And sometimes they don't realize how insanely hurtful or, um, you know, just rude. <laughs> Yeah. inappropriate yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I remember i mean i try not to be a super confrontational first pers person but i remember doing like in, in an era of doing bar gigs for example where i'm there with my band and we're doing you know gigs at little hole in the wall spots and um and getting into a couple confrontations you yeah. know where i had to be like listen security this person's getting out of hand wow. i don't like to have those moments but you have to stand up for yourself sometimes well yeah it's still you're there for a job i mean you're there to, to perform and, yeah. that, and well, there's a certain understanding it's like any other business there's gotta what's be some interesting boundaries. is people find it hard to accept that you're at work yeah so i remember this one time a, a little anecdote i had this guy being really disrespectful during a show and i actually brought him up on stage i kind of he was you know Fortunately, not too big for me to put my <laughs> my arm around. That's really really short. So I put my arm around him and I put him on the mic on the spot in front of everybody. And I said, "What do you do for a living?" And I forget what it was he said, but it was like an office uh, setting job. Right. And I said, "Okay, great, because on Monday, I'm gonna show up to your office. I'm gonna stand on your desk oh. and pardon the expression, not to be rude, but I said I'm going to take a piss <laughs> all, over all your things." I said it just like that. I mean, it was really you know. A little vulgar, I apologize. I but love it. I, but I think that was exactly what I said to him. And I said, uh, because that's what you're doing to my show right now. Exactly. You have legitimately just come and disrespected all the hard work and everything yep. that we're doing. Yeah. And yep. you're treating me as if what I, the job that I'm doing is not as important as the job. Mm. That is so true. And I think as entertainers, sometimes we deal with that because people don't always necessarily take it seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody's like, asking, how did he react? Mm -hmm. He was embarrassed. He left. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was kind of awesome. Actually. A lot of entertainers the tip their hat to that. Laughed. <laughs> they laughed him off stage, and right. then I think his friends felt bad for him, and wow. they left. So it was a perfect turnout, really. You did a, you did an awesome job with it. You yeah. got well, the right outcome. You that. learn to you kind of learn to deal with all types of scenarios that you get put in, especially when you do those types of gigs. Yeah. That's why I think it's important. And I did those gigs later. But in you my know career. what? That transcends, I think especially to like a lot of the people here who are YouTubers. Yeah. Like, that sense to you. It's like the, the famous dislike button guy. Yeah. You know, the guy that watches every single video but still right dislikes. when you post it and still dislikes your video. Like, yeah. what is that? that <laughs> What's is happening true. there? And There's... then takes the time to leave a comment. Uh, no, like, no. Le yeah. oh, long, lengthy comment it. about how they don't like it. While. Like, for the most part, I, I like to just try to spin things into a joke. Like, when yeah. even when I said that to that guy, like, I said it in a way that was funny and people laughed. You know? Yeah, exactly. At his expense, of course. So I think if you're going to if you're gonna take make the, the effort to respond to that sort of thing, make sure that, A, it's, it's somebody who's uh, maybe worth your attention. Yes. No, and, and, and it's okay to acknowledge the haters because I feel like it's okay to let them know I accept that you don't like me and I'm cool with it. Like, yeah, yeah. And sometimes there's, cool. look, and sometimes people don't aren't the most eloquent in their delivery of constructive criticism. Yes, exactly. And that's fine right, also right, right. because yes. it's it, there's value in the comment, yeah. even if they said it in a rude way. If they, You're talking too much. Okay, well, maybe I'm talking too much for you, yes. but maybe there's some validity. Maybe I need to shorten my on cameras by 10 <laughs> yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Exactly. And it's in the back of your mind and, and in, a, in, in, in a way, indirectly, yeah, I think you don't want to dwell. You, you don't want to yeah. dwell on those things either because yeah. you'll keep yourself up at night. Like, am I talking too much? <laughs> right. Like, do I have to? Oh yeah. my god, maybe that you. you did he and again, the like artist, face. the artist <laughs> in us is you know. Yeah, we're like but I think that. it's you can get what you can out of it and yeah. then and then don't waste the energy. On well, there is a movement right now to get rid of the dislike button, and it's actually hit yeah. YouTube's ears. We we, we, we didn't like it. we didn't do it at first. We've always had like a couple, like you say, that always came on, and we knew right away. And if a four to the five were there and the other one wasn't, we'd always look in the camera, wish that they're feeling well and they can make it to hit the, the button after or they think we're right. so special. Right. We always laughed at it. But then we started getting trolled. We were getting like 140 dislikes in 10 minutes. They were using bots at us. Oh, wow. Week. And that oh, drives wow. you down yeah, the algorithms. Yeah, well, when yeah. people start doing it with malicious intent, yeah, then that's you know that's not. Good. That's why they're talking about getting um, rid of it because there's no and it's all there's no uh, it's all behind the scenes. There's no constructiveness right. with it anymore. Right. Where at least then it forces people if you really don't like them, then you have to leave a comment and say why, even if you say exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah. With, with the dislike buttons become kind of like a gang feature. One channel doesn't like the other; they get all their friends. And together they start, yeah, right. that's where it becomes. But it's, it's like dislike bombs. It's a toss yeah. up because yeah. it's also like you don't want. Ah, you don't want to create this world where people think that everybody has to like you either. No. You know, it's like, yeah. it's hard. It, it's, it's, no, but it, it's honestly, I don't mind it if somebody gives me, you know, they, they comment, hey, I watch your videos. I generally like them, but sometimes you go on a little too much or sometimes <laughs> yeah. you're, you know, they're, you know, I, I, I want to look at the cars. I don't want to see you talking about them. I get it. It's yeah. fine. Like yeah. if that's, that's constructive criticism to me because ultimately, you know, I could use that maybe. Yeah. If, it, if, if in any way it alters or affects a decision I make six videos down the line, it's it's done, it's good. Yeah. But like you Karen know? said, it's like watching TV. If you don't like the program, switch to another channel. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I, I've never, man, if, if there's something that I'm really not into, it would never stop watching. occur to me to yeah. But you be still so proactive to like make it known like I'm <laughs> right i think ultimately it, 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 it starts to feel vengeful or right or, like, the, it's, I, i'm almost just like okay next yeah. like but it, know, it almost gets to that point as soon as you get somewhere on youtube at some point it does become the vengeful thing and that's the problem yeah. it's lost its identity right. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, we, as a society, it, we love to build people up so we can tear them down. Exactly. Well, Where the comments, also, at least you can put something what you don't like, and then it's yeah. constructive. But there exactly. you can literally get like, okay, I got a channel of 50. I don't like you. Great. We're all just going to show up every time we hit the dislike button. And that's well, what's yeah, happening. Well, yeah, because you need to have a constructive, a constructive yes. criticism. You need yeah. to make right. mistakes to learn and to, to become better. But yeah. uh, it's it's far beyond that. It, it, it doesn't do any good anymore. It, it, it has nothing to do with the content uh, at yeah. all. A point yeah. in the sense that if someone does hit the dislike, I would love to know why. Why? Yeah, exactly. Just so that exactly. I can have not not out of like a morbid curiosity, but just because I would, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. well, please share so yep. that I know what you feel like. And I'm that's one of the on. options they're looking at. If they do keep it, they're going to add like a four point questionnaire where you have to right. make like a check mark right. list. So that's honest. a good idea, I think, yeah. because at least yeah. you're doing it with validity. Yeah, not yeah. Just I be... mean, there's so many layers to the dislike button in a way because maybe they don't like what 
like if, as a product reviewer. They don't like the product you're reviewing. It's not necessarily mm. they don't like you. No. Maybe they just don't like what you're reviewing, or maybe the message you're communicating they don't like, or maybe you did a skit that lasted yep. 30 seconds too long, and that's the part they didn't like. They liked everything else. You can never know. But they got to get rid of – you see, with the comments, you can't bot it, and that's the problem. Right. The dislikes you can bot. I'll give you an example. We had, what, 45 dislikes total in the whole right. time we were on, and in 10, right. 10 days we went up to almost 3,000. Wow! In ten days, oh, oh, well, yeah, they, they were they were they were botting it. We're watching it. every ten minutes was just going up and up and oh, up. Oh yeah, one hundred eighty, one hundred nine. That can yeah. hurt you in the algorithm then at of that course. point because you're so close to the edge of fifty percent. Yeah, stuff like and, and, and someone said, "Is it just like still a view?" Uh, I don't know how that, but it also makes yeah, it's yes, technically but, a view, but but it also lets YouTube I'll give think you, that there's something wrong, right? Yeah. That up to a certain like what you're, up to yeah. a certain point, it actually helps the algorithm because then it looks like there's good engagement. But right. once you get up over the 30, 40, 50 percent, then it can actually really be detrimental. Hurt, hurtful. It, right. And you're less recommended in the algorithm sometimes and stuff like that. Then it becomes a real problem. So it's a right. view, and, a view and, up to like a point. G, like G, Geo Jerry said, as long as they watch the entire vid. So right. yeah, yeah. If they're killing your watch time. That's not helping yeah. either, I suppose. But even by putting in that check mark option, that will, because a bot can't replicate that, hopefully. Right. So if that right. gets rid sure. of that, then keep the thumbs down for sure, you know? Right. And at least yeah. you'll have something to choose from, you know? So. I think the questionnaire thing could be really valid. Hmm. Like, okay, you're going to hit the dislike, yeah. but you have to fill this other stuff. Exactly, right? so, exactly. Put a yeah, little bit so. of work into it. You're and amazing. And it also it, it kind of should kill the bot thing, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Because it is yeah, becoming a lot not. of real problems. Some channels get like 550 likes and 10,000 dislikes, and they're just destroyed mm -hmm. in the algorithm and not after a while from it. Yeah. It's cute that someone accidentally had a typo where they said lizard instead of Liza, <laughs> but that's actually funny because that was like my nickname in high school. Really? <laughs> what? Uh, that's funny. Lizard. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I don't know. It's like a I mean, not everybody, but like my close friends. I wouldn't let the whole school. Okay, come okay, through. okay. Now I gotta ask. I gotta ask. Why, yeah. why lizard? I gotta hear the story. There's a story or something there. No, no, no story about lizard. Thing, I think it's I just because if you put an RD at the end of Liza, it becomes lizard. <laughs> oh, I was thinking someone like, had, oh, someone I'm... had that type. No, I don't have any cool lizard stories. Mm -hmm. I wish I did. <laughs> Nothing that cool. <laughs> this is where you make up. But it was one. a cute typo. I thought it was funny. He's like, I met Liza. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so um, uh, I just wanted to ask about uh, the, the tips each of you maybe could give for as a vocal coach and as a film uh, uh, editor. Sure. Uh, since Absolutely. we have lots of people here that kind of um, do a little bit of everything and, and, and there's mm -hmm. always lots of questions about how to improve those th themselves or how to do this or that. Mm -hmm. So if you okay. can you come up with... Do you want to like, uh, go first? No, let's here with the first or it's just in general like a general thing yeah well, like somebody who would want to uh improve themselves into film editing or go into more for their uh, youtube videos what you would suggest well, I, like from an editorial perspective i always say this i mean the best lesson anybody ever taught me was to start with audio like i i'm liza alluded to it earlier like the idea that you know as a as a kind of a semi-frustrated musician i was always coming at things from a perspective of of listening to it first uh, so yeah, so for me, I, if I would give any tip to anybody out there who's using editing software would be to, to turn off the video tracks, just edit to the, to the ear, make it pleasing yeah. to the ear. Uh, you know, uh, someone asked, do you use Adobe? I do. We use Adobe, uh, creative suite for mm -hmm. everything. Same so here. premiere yeah. for editing Photoshop, uh, for any kind of, you know, thumbnail or anything like that. I use After Effects for some graphic stuff when I do do graphic stuff, but yeah, um, Adobe is what I mean. I've I've used throughout my career. I've used everything: Final Cut, Avid. Yeah. Uh, but Adobe's in a great spot right now. Yeah, he definitely yeah. makes me, uh, which is pretty cool. He's to really pick the right music first. Yep. Mm -hmm. And think about what you're gonna edit, like like you mentioned earlier about um, about uh, editing to the groove to the right. music there's a rhythm to it right right um so that's that's been really helpful to me one of the things that he's taught me he also taught me really, something really funny with the, with the comedy stuff and i think it holds true for a lot of stuff is one time he told me look you want to you want to get in and get out or what would you say get, get in, in late get in late and get out early, early. i thought that was great advice <laughs> it is <laughs> because it's like um 
it's not about like overcutting per se, but like don't let a joke drag on too long yes. or know when you've got the moment and get out. Yeah. Right. Kind right. of thing. He's like, all right, you got it. You don't have to linger yeah, on if you ever, if you, I'm sure people out there watch Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live is famous for this. Like, yeah. like they have skits and they have the, the most hilarious part is in the middle and yep. then they drag on for another minute or two and it's yep. just like, oh. That's God, you could have just ended it right there. And was- that's, so why I don't, that's why I don't watch Saturday Night Live for that. Exactly. They never yeah. respected the time. Some people think that's funny and the joke is in that. To me, it turns me yeah. off towards it. Yeah. Right. I yeah. thought that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you, you taught me that. Definitely. I'm, I'm trying to think of all the like other key things that maybe as the. As the no, and I mean, the, I, the I think, I think you just have to have a certain sense of wanting to learn. Yeah. You have to constantly feed your inner algorithm, so yes. to speak because timing is key yeah because you do have to uh practice you have to want to learn you have to want to push yourself you have to want to want to be uncomfortable like yeah. i think that's an important thing like you have to want to be uncomfortable there are going to be times and liza can talk to this just with this whole youtube experience where she felt uncomfortable sitting at the desk not knowing what to do yeah. and that's fine that's yeah. how you learn I, I and now all this she music can do it. software and i was like i gotta learn more right. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh we just got a light went out yeah okay. Um, yes, no, but, but yeah, that, that I think, um, kind of overcoming those hurdles of like, oh, well, I'm not going to get into that yeah. and just doing it, you know, like just yeah. doing it and learning as much as possible. I, have, I think that's important too. My number for editing. I usually try, I tell people, I try to learn three new tricks every time I edit. That's kind of not sure. too many to sick it, to get frustrated, but enough to always keep challenged. Like, you know, mm-hmm. and they don't mm-hmm. have to be big things. Cause I say that right away. People think effects, not effects people for the right. love of God, please don't overdo effects. I just yeah. this so another, another thing yeah. that I learned is that he taught me is, you know, we, we always have like what we call like our on camera or our two camera section where, where we address the audience either in an intro or an outro. I mean, he has a lot more of that, obviously, with, with his channel. But between my comedy, I'll have moments where I address, and he's yes. kind of taught me how to make those moments more engaging with little details. They're very well whether done. Whether it be graphic, thank you. Yeah, that's all about all stuff he's taught me, like either whether it be graphic details or, you know, um, transitions that become a motif. Yes. Right. Uh, or, uh, you know, certain slow push-ins that might seem subtle, but it's creating a movement that, you know, right. you're kind of unaware of. Um, so I'm starting to look at it kind of the way I would look at music or vocal production. Like sometimes there's a little texture over here that you're not really conscious of, right. but it's it's lifting a moment. Yeah. So I think, how can I keep this interesting? So anytime I feel like I start getting a little bored, I imagine that my viewer might too. So I just start seeing what can I add that's going to keep them engaged. Well, you guys it's kind of something it. I'm starting to learn because of that, that he taught me about like, you know, very cool. Uh-huh. So we shoot in 4K so that we can have, you know, push-in capabilities. That's a great tip because I yeah. think lots of YouTubers are actually thinking about how to yes. maintain that retention uh, throughout you know, the video. You know, what's interesting is, Detail. honestly, Detail. like, you know, I come from a television background, yeah. you know, TV, filmmaking. So my introduction into the world of content creation was from a very different kind of place than a lot of YouTubers because yeah. Yeah. a lot of YouTubers just kind of learn on the fly and they go with the flow. And, and even... YouTubers watching other YouTubers, you know, like the the way they work or the way I like to do very, uh, my approach is very structured. Yeah. So like our on cameras are always scripted. Um, we keep a general kind of naturalistic flow to our on cameras, but they're written down somewhere and they exist and we, we kind of curate them. Uh, and I think that's, a little bit different from how a lot of YouTubers work, where it's like, especially in the, the, the vlogger kind of yeah. culture, where they're just kind of talking to camera, just cutting, 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 cutting. Yes. To kind of tell their story. So, you know, I think for us, it's made our process a little different than some people. You know? uh, somebody had a, an interesting question it is when you say motif, do you keep it bucks wild? Do you, do you keep it to one video or do you try to carry them throughout? And we actually, we try to carry it throughout. Yeah. I think uh, I, I'm sure you, maybe you guys have heard of Tim Schmoyer. He does the uh, the video creators yes. lab. Yes. Um, Tim Schmoyer has, you know, he, he always harps on this book, the primal branding. Yeah. Uh, and he talks a lot about developing rituals yeah. with your audience and, and people come to expect certain things. And those are the motifs that we talk about the idea that, you know, you're, you maybe you don't say the same words in the same order, but there's something familiar about, the way you do it yeah. that you know uh creates yeah. creates expectation that it's an itch that needs to be scratched in a way and i think yeah. that's been really he's 
yeah, we've been it, early on. Omar started kind of um, creating these visual things that would kind of appear in my episodes. So we have this little like uh, kind of VHS effect that has yeah. kind of stuck throughout, which yeah. I think is kind of fitting considering the fact that I like, you know, grew up in the 90s and mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the late 80s right. or the 90s kind of VHS. You yeah. Know? Um, so I think it's it's a uh, it's fitting, but it's it's one thing that people come to expect. So we'll always have the same little Liza Quinn kind of logo thing pop up with mm -hmm. that same font, yes. same mm -hmm. kind of graphic. We try to keep a uh, graphics go. motif too. Yeah. So sometimes with the characters, we'll have this thing yeah. where the name swipes in. Yeah. You may have seen that, and it'll kind of give like a little description. Yep. Which, yeah. And I try to do that whenever possible because I start thinking about people who may never have are new I've to the channel, exactly, and are seeing that so, video yeah. for the first time, yep. and they'll yeah. kind of always know who the characters are because I'm always going to kind of introduce. Yeah, them. and in that respect, it's all branding, right? Yep. Like you're you, you're just thinking about how to brand yourself and like how to create, um, how to create an entity yep. or an essence, sure, like an identity, really, yeah, an identity. Word, right? An identity. And, and that's important. And, and that's something I picked up from be many, many years of promotions for yeah. major networks where I saw kind of firsthand how they were branding and what what elements are important for branding. Yep. So, so yeah, yeah, I would say if you can find something that you can carry on throughout, somebody said, uh, hello, Liza Quintana, hola. <laughs> <laughs> so, hola, uh, <laughs> hola, Erin. Uh, it is Quintana. Yeah. I Quintana. love it. Oh. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think if you can find a motif that fits throughout, uh, I do always think it's helpful. It just creates, like you said, brand awareness, familiarity, right. something it, people can Branding is everything here, and that's the same as us. Like where I worked with big brands and Xenia's psychology background, and that's the first thing we did was just mash it together, even with our live streams. There's times for each segment that goes on. We do keep things very structured. It might look like it, but we're always working right. in a frame, and that's the beauty of it is when you're doing it, people don't realize you're doing it. Right. We discuss everything going on. Our brand is, is sacred to us on here. That's the one thing we never fool with. And we get it out there the way we represent it. And as I'm always telling people, I'm so glad when you said it, keeping the same font, keeping the same look, keeping the same colors. They're so important that people have a yeah. warm place to go, like our favorite TV shows. Yeah. If MASH one day you weren't tuned in and looked like Hawaii Five-0, and the next time you tuned in and looked like Murder, She Wrote, and looked like nobody right. would ever build a bond with it because <laughs> they don't true. know what's coming right. next. You know, it, it's that warmth. In well, it. I mean, from a perspective of YouTube, you definitely want somebody to recognize the thumbnail before they even know it's you who did That's right. the video, right? Wow, I'm loving this. So, I'm loving hearing so this. So if you see the thumbnail, you're making the connection already. You instantly know. Like I, I know what Peter McKinnon's thumbnails look like. Right. I know what Casey Neistat's thumbnails look like because they always yep. generally look the same. And sometimes they take liberties, but that's okay too. Yes. But ultimately, they're kind of relying and falling back on on, a, yeah, on the tropes they created for sure. Yeah. And you, yeah, he he did that for both of our channels early on. Helped kind of create what that aesthetic. Was the doing. earlier, the better. The yeah, we, yeah, we have a, a kind of a color scheme oh, yeah. too yeah. with the graphics where we yeah. tend to always keep with like we'll have like a hot pink that's kind of synonymous with the logo or right. a yellow or a bright blue. So yeah. my channel is like a little more colorful. Yeah. Right. And his is we kind of created this like study setting for the gentleman week. It, right. it does. It, it, it has that basement club style to it. You know the guy that always yeah. built the ultimate yeah, den? Kind right. Of squeaky, right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You feel yeah, it the moment or, you walk or in. The, or like a library or something. Yes. Yeah, we wanted that. That's definitely the what we were going yeah when for. he came to me with the idea um you know he when i showed up in his life it was like super bachelor pad <laughs> had a bare book oh man <laughs> and uh and but yet people think i'm responsible for that set and it was really all him so uh, he, i wouldn't say it was all mostly him. i mean obviously we collaborated but it was really his vision so nice. he was like i have this idea of like he, that was the interesting thing about when the gentleman wake started yeah. is that he, he was very clear in what he wanted everything to look like Right. Yeah. Which I think is really interesting. So um, now I'm not saying you have to do that right away, obviously. Um, but if you do have a, it is, if you can kind of put together a world yep. that you invite people into, I think that's always great. Yep. And he was very clear in his vision. So he sent me this picture of the um, Sherlock Holmes series. Oh, the, uh, nice. the, the BBC set. one. Yeah, the, the set, set of the, the He's like, you know, something like where Sherlock Holmes would hang out. I love <laughs> and he had it. just come back from London. Oh, my uh, God. Nice. Oh, that is and so I cool. was like, so we have, there's a little like British flag pillow that pops up in a lot of the episodes because we, it's like our little homage to, uh, to British that, culture though. and to, <laughs> to Sherlock Holmes. Nice. And we have a Sherlock Holmes bust. Yeah. In our set too, it's a little Sherlock Holmes bus with like an, um, really? an magnifying glass. It's great actually. Really? Yeah, it's a cool, yeah. So we're a little, you know, we have little um, Easter eggs, like little hints. I'm about uh, Sherlock. 
but <laughs> I, I love your shirt too lit. I just think that's what's the greatest shirt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that sweater I, uh, I, came I, home with that uh, party guess, city find. I've fun. had that queued up for a while. And you did. You compliment the cards very well, like, you know, with your logo and stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it's an inviting. It sets the premise. And like you say, a TV production is all works the same way. Stage well, production. Well, you know, what's interesting is like that's part of that is the like the perfectionist in me. Like I can't <laughs> let it like just be – a deck review where I just sit there and talk about something I can't. I, yeah. If I came up with an idea, I need to include it. Like yeah. to, to much to Liza's chagrin because sometimes <laughs> it's like we're spending how much money on a well, on this on the, Edgar Allan Poe I'm the one who's like, like keeping the business, you know, like on a tight ship. I'm like, know, wait, 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 we're in a deficit. Right? Like a, this business that episode, like, uh, <laughs> there's one called the Raven episode, and I dressed up like like oh, Edgar Allan Poe yeah. and did like this whole bitch. She yeah. did like the whole makeup thing, and it was great. You know? a lot of fun you know? yeah i had a, a fortunately i also have i grew up with a makeup artist mother who would we would go all out for halloween right so i learned really oh early yeah i mean like, in the zombie episode makeup. was like i'm no, not a professional effects makeup artist but i do like doing it so uh i do his makeup for his characters i'm, just, that show, I'm just showing everybody <laughs> your channel again yeah the yeah. halloween episode the ring one is oh the that. zombie makeup that i did that yeah. was fun yeah. that was that took a while yeah. to do but we had a good time with that yeah. um that's... But yeah, we with with that we took our we, we, when we got married we decided not to spend money on a wedding, and instead we we turned the profits from our <laughs> marriage yeah. into our living room. I love yeah. it. So I he love went it. and he was very he meticulously curated everything in that room for his gentleman wig set, right. and obviously it's multifunctional because I shoot in there too for my episodes. Sure. It's cool though. I, and I love that you guys said that. Like, you decided to invest it in. I think that's so smart. We're like huge people and that kind of stuff. So, like, hats yeah. off to you. How long does it take for you guys to, uh, to to get the video? Like, with all the prep, you know, makeup, costumes, setting up. Uh, all that. The episodes. Those episodes with more um, elaborate kind of situations or skits or setups, th those take a little bit longer. But generally, I've gotten to the point, at least on my channel, where I can make, I can comfortably make an episode a week. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I I just celebrated my one year YouTube anniversary. Um, congratulations! This is my YouTube birthday. We just celebrated that. Congratulations, <laughs> too. And uh, are you gonna sing me Happy Birthday? Sure. <laughs> there you go. I have, I got a couple other birthdays in there, so I'm gonna yeah. have to lump it up. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, and I managed to, to, to do that, to hit the, you know, to hit that weekly mark. And I ended up posting, I don't know, 57 videos. over. Yeah, 57. he started to, he started streamlining and he started to get a system for sure. how to make his videos more sure. efficient. When we first started, we were making everything hero content. Mm -hmm. And it was taking us sometimes like, you know, weeks. Because remember, we, we work in other things as well. So right. we don't have 100% of our time to dedicate to it. Yeah. So it would take like sometimes weeks to finish these oh. episodes. Yeah. really a lot of late nights and uh you that's know, normal so, at first yeah so it definitely takes some more time Once we try every now and then to inject another kind of hero episode when we can okay. so that people don't think that we're skimping on value yes. either right um but we've also figured out how to do like more hygiene content where we can kind of keep the workflow um i'm still kind of learning how to do that on my channel like i said i'm just recently becoming more self-sufficient in these last few episodes so I'm st I might actually be bringing the audience along on my journey to become more self-sufficient. Um, that would be great. And, and, and that's kind of like, obviously, I still see him as a big part of the process. So it's not like he's going to not be a part of it anymore. But, he, you know, he's it's just to a point where when it's time to do the hero content, he can step in and we can, you know, right. get right. the, get yeah, the and stuff that's done. And the same is true even on my, I mean, Liza comes on my channel. She's come, Periodically. it's like a thing where like people oh. will ask, for Lady Wake, where <laughs> that's her name, her moniker on the Gentleman Wake I channel is Lady Wake. I love it. So, yeah, they've been kind enough to accept me. Uh, yeah. So there was one guy once that was like, ah, oh, I just want to that's not true. <laughs> Get but, her out of here. <laughs> but, you know, like the idea that she comes on and she does guest kind of takeover reviews where she takes over. Oh, my God. Uh, and it's pretty fun, you know? Yeah. And, and it's been like four or five episodes. A couple right? already. Yeah. yeah. I, nice. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we make each other obviously a part of. Yeah. We bring each other. For sure. But I definitely. Very much the wake family so i'm definitely trying to cool. up my output yeah it's a little bit harder when you have to play multiple characters sure. um because just the time it takes me to become one yeah i know right and then i have to think i'm like okay i have to shoot all my female characters first because once i get that mustache on <laughs> yeah it's a bit hard to jump glue, back and that forth. Glue is that's when i get turned on <laughs> 
That's when all your <laughs> fantasies come to life. Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> oh, but that glue is going to be stuck on my face. I have to be oh. thinking about that spirit glue. Right. So I, oh, I, I think about how I have to be myself first. Okay. Liza Quinn and then go slowly transition <laughs> into it, all the characters. It's, so, it's um, a process. It takes a little, yeah, it's a little, that's what's time consuming yeah. for me. So it's a little harder for me to be as frequent with my output of, on my channel. But I'm hoping little by little, you know, that's, I'm doing the best I can to meet that. Well, I think. think you guys are doing fantastic into it. I Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. Aaron's, I mean, I, oh. yeah, when Liza told me that you you wanted us to, I was like, well, why? <laughs> what do you mean? We don't, we don't have like, we don't have oh. like a following or anything. Like, why are we? I thought you guys we were very to, kind to, to have us on. Who are we to like, you know, no, we're, it's impart our, pleasure. our wisdom? Like, yeah, look, like, all I can do is just say the stuff that we're learning as we go. Yeah. Because uh, by no means do I feel like I've got it all figured out. Uh, no, all. I don't but know. We're just. I wouldn't say I would say you're pretty much a lot further ahead in the game than that, but <laughs> that would be my vote. And Aaron said here, well, if these two men aren't the luckiest guys on YouTube right now, I don't know who is. Uh, Aww, isn't that sweet? That's so very funny. true. Very there true. Go. Yes. Aaron's going places with that. Uh, uh, and, uh, as I as you say in Spanish, that uh, 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 Tony, of course, was asking if you know Gloria Estefan. And I do. She was my first boss in the music industry. Um, they were my first publishers, uh, Gloria and Emilio Estefan. That was so cool. They gave me kind of my first big break. To right. be honest, um, I, I owe them a lot, actually. Mm. Yeah, I haven't really been able to stay in touch because clearly they're very busy people. Right. Um, and like I told you before, I get a little shy. Like, I never want to be, like, mm. harassing people, you know? I would and have been I like, always... yo, Emilio, <laughs> how's it going, no, bud? Too, is that I, I mean, I'm sure if I run into them, they'll be super gracious. But it, what it is, too, is just mm. that at the age that I started, I didn't really know. I was so shy and, like, didn't really know how to be super like in everyone's mm. face, but, um, but they were really great to me. So yeah, yeah, I, I do know them and I consider them kind of my early mentors, you know, mm. in the game. That is so cool. So it's pretty wow. Nice. 573, but, babe. But, oh, thank you, there you guys. Go, guys. Like, like 18, so uh, 18 appreciate... or 19 new subscribers. I, and thank you guys for having us on. Welcome to those here. new people. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> welcome guys. I appreciate it. I hope, hope, you, I hope, you, I hope you like what we're making for you. Let's see. Um, so I, but I, funny, funny fact about Gloria is that I, as a kid, you know, is a Cuban American kid in Miami. That was like the top, right? That was a thing to aspire to. So what Gloria and Amina were able to create and pave the way for as Cuban Americans in, in the music industry and, and on a global level, um, I looked up to them and I would handwrite her letters mm. and give them to my mom. Wow. My mom had this friend at work that I think used to like road manage for them or something. Jerry. And, <laughs> no, not Jerry. That's an episode inside joke. Right? <laughs> sure the link but I, uh, the, I, and I would I beg my mom, can you please get her to get this to Gloria? And she actually would. Wow. And a couple times Gloria wrote me back, which I thought was really sweet. Yeah. And as a kid, I remember telling her specifically, it's so vivid. I used to say, one day I'm going to work for you. My dream is going to be to work with you or for you, but I'm going to work with you. Uh, and I remember when the opportunity came up, oh, who's that? Who up in my creator spotlight? Oh, yeah. yeah. Fellow 305. <laughs> awesome. Well, Don't good. get distracted. Sorry, sorry. I, yeah, I have no attention span. I apologize. Um, <laughs> squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> that's me. I'm totally the worst of my dog. Um, but yes, okay, so I, I sent you that letter and uh, and I was very, you know, I always kind of had that in the back of my mind that that would be like the, the ultimate dream. I had a friend of mine who was one of the first artists signed to their label that they had started with Sony um, back in like 99, early 2000s. And um, and he cut one of my records and that's what got me to them and mm. they i got to meet them at the studio and i went over there and, and the publisher the, the lawyer for the publishing company at the time had brought me in to get to know me and to see if i wanted to work for with them and sign a deal um and so that to me was like wait a minute i remember thinking like mind blow and i was like wait what like i used to write her letters and tell her that i was gonna work that's for her so cool. and through that experience I got to write a first single for her Greatest Hits Volume 2 album. Um, I had the first single off that album. They had two original tracks and mine was the first single. And I remember seeing uh, on the Today Show, she performed it and people in the audience were singing it. And oh. it was, I mean, I remember just sobbing in my room. I was still living at my parents' house, okay? I was a kid. I'm sobbing in my room, like watching this on TV, thinking like, 
that's it. Like I, I think I've made it. Like, <laughs> like all my dreams. How wrong you were. I know. I know. Honestly, it's still a milestone moment for me. And um, and I and I think about um, <laughs> are we doing this like, the squishy plug the dog one? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was a milestone moment for me that I'll never forget. You know, so I feel like I owe them a lot for making that dream a reality. Oh. Yeah. Pretty cool. They gave a kid from Kendall a chance. So. Wow, are nice. you talking about Out of Nowhere song? Because everybody's asking, who, which song is it? Who? Out of Nowhere? Yeah, who, did, did you know it? Who, who knew it? Well, well uh, yeah, I did the research. Oh! <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but people no, in the yeah, chat were asking. Yeah, know about that tune. But um, yeah, it was called Out of Nowhere, yes. That's and uh, it's in fact was nominated for a Grammy Award. It was Best Dance Recording. Um, so actually, uh, that was fun. That was the first Grammy I got to go to. The producer was nice enough wow. to, to invite me. That's so, cool. That's um, amazing. How old were you when all that was happening? What's that? I'm sorry. How just, old were you when all that was happening? 12. She was, nah, 12. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was, she was a child prodigy. <laughs> I wasn't, uh, I was by no means a prodigy, but I was, uh, 19. I was wow. 19 so That's as soon cool. as I graduated high school, um, that, opportunity came up now mind you it didn't fall from the sky either like i had been working since i was a kid so it had been you know 10 years of kind of hustling in the scene so to speak and i remember going to performing arts high school my mom would pick me up at around 10 p.m after doing tech rehearsals for whatever show we were working on drive me to fort lauderdale which was far from where we were in miami um so that i could go to the studio and record my original music to then uh, i would eat in the car and then sleep in the car on the way back home so I can get up at 4 a.m. Wow. So I was definitely like, yeah, and do it all over again the next day. So I was definitely hustling for that. But there is a substantial amount of luck uh, mm -hmm. required as well. Like, I'm not going to say that it was just because of the hard work, but it was a combination of the two. And uh, and and when that opportunity came up, it was I had just graduated. It was the summer after my graduating high school. Wow. And uh, and yeah, so it was that 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 friend that I was in a music group with when we were kids was the one who wanted to cut the record. So I owe a lot to him too because if he hadn't done that, um, I would have never had that opportunity. But that's the uh, thing; you always have to do the work and when luck strikes, and if it strikes, you're ready for it. I, yeah, you, you know. just kind of like keep doing it until, yeah. uh, and none of those opportunities guarantee you. No, anything. what's what like you're you're, always, you're constantly like you know, luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Yeah, that's I mean, right. Look, I think I, I think luck is luck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. no, I don't know. There's validity in that. Like, but there's validity you, in that. You're in prepared, it. and the opportunity comes. That's the but I think you create more possibility for lucky opportunities when you're constantly working right. to make that happen. So I was actually on one of the podcasts I was listening to. Uh, I, I remember one of the entrepreneurs saying something like, because uh, all of them seem to acknowledge the luck part, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. But they also say like, if it's just if you are working toward that lucky situation long enough, statistically speaking, eventually sure. something good's going to come out of it. You know, like it does. Something good will happen. And that's what we tell, like sometimes uh, tying back into YouTube, we'll get people sometimes to say, oh, you know, I can't wait. When I get around 2,000 subscribers, I'm really going to buy this and that. And I'm going to up my game. I'm going to learn to do it. It's, you don't do that. You start right from the beginning up in your game with whatever you got, do the best with what you can do because you never know when that opportunity. And we can't say the channel right now, but there's one that had a couple hundred subscribers. They just got picked up for a show for Discovery. Oh, amazing. That's so cool. That's great. And they didn't have yeah, 2.7 million. They had literally under 1,000, way yep. under 1,000. Oh, wow. Yep. But just wow. happened to get noticed. Somebody was scouting, liked the way they were, got in contact, and the rest is history. So That's how it happens. Yep. Well, look, this was pretty lucky that yep. Karen was nice enough to, she found us and was yes. nice enough to make the connect. So uh, that, oh, that's we, cool we feel too. lucky. Yeah, we exactly. feel lucky oh, no, for being no, connected. Yeah, we we, we do. We Thank really you do. Know. You guys are awesome. Nice. We're so lucky. I'm going to play the lottery when I get <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. You guys are just too funny. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I have very bad jokes. No. <laughs> Uh, it runs joke. right in with the rest of our show. It's perfect. It works in so well with what we do. We're trying to get people to come to my sketch comedy. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I know you guys got a great sense of humor, and it is a lot of fun. And once again, it's nice. It's it's not taking yourself too seriously, but very seriously done. Yeah. And that's how I would that's sum a, up. That's, that's a good way of putting that's it. That's a actually. great, yeah. Like that's that. really interesting that you should say that. We're very <laughs> serious about not taking ourselves seriously. <laughs> But your quality, no, I, your quality, I, I do, yeah. And you know, yeah. I think also it's an interesting thing too. It's uh, where to draw the line between spending 
overthinking the quality per se, yes. but yet giving enough of yourself and, and showing to people that, yes, I'm putting this up there. It's a free channel, but I want you to get the most value out of your experience. That's here. right. Mm -hmm. And I think in anything, you know, in sales and anything, it's, it's the, what can I, what can I offer you? Yeah. Why is this of so much value that you're going to take two minutes mm -hmm. to sit and watch it? Exactly. Right? Um, so I think wherever, whatever you're doing, maybe you don't have a fancy camera, mm -hmm. but what can you do to up the value bar That's like right. for your audience? You know, right. Going I, out I, yeah, I read it. I read it or saw it somewhere. I can't remember where. So I'm going to be very bad about attributing this. But they said, just get 1% better every time you do something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And 1% no, cool. is a yeah. very manageable number. Like mm -hmm. if that means like making your video, make it 1% better, add some graphics um you know yep. instead of one music track use two like it's just like just get one percent better every time you do something practice your pre and, your presentation go in yeah, front of a exactly. different curtain whatever will up with what you got to work yeah, with because yeah. a lot of yeah. youtubers are getting like i was years ago in music when i played you know the 80s style oh if you didn't spend four thousand a guitar it sucked if you didn't spend seven yeah. on drums that was bull because any of those guys came down they could play anything and make it sound good it was sure. practicing their craft and that's what's becoming in youtube and I love Peter McKinnon from the bottom of my heart. He inspired right. us to get back into it. That said, we, and he was kind of the poster boy for it. We were talking on Christmas on a long family drive. Is it almost getting to the point where everybody's getting mesmerized by expensive equipment that they feel they sure. need it to be able to go on YouTube? Yeah. And I do get people saying, I just blew four grand on a camera. I'm like, oh my God. Like, don't oh, do like that. Thing, yeah. Remember? Yeah. yeah. I had this young friend that was like, I'm going to go for it, go for yeah. the red. He's like, you do you have to? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Do. For the record, I, I use the Sony sixty five hundred for most of my stuff. I mean, they're, yeah, this, they're, that camera costs used. You probably get one for under a thousand dollars. Yeah. So yep. we shoot, and it's just you just use the right settings. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. I mean, and look, yeah. I, if you can do it, like, yeah. Sure. And I, we were watching this YouTuber yesterday that uh, Omar was turning me on to, Mike, Mike Diavila, Mike Avila, Diavila, De, De, Mike Diavila, Diavila, oh. Mike Diavila, Mike Diavila. Yeah, really. Okay. I don't know if you've watched him. He, he does like minimalist content. He's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, his footage looks phenomenal. Everything yeah. he shoots is just great. amazing. But he had this really cool episode about being a minimalist, about like the questions to ask yourself before you go splurging on gear, and it was like. Yeah. Uh, you know, are you, um, when first, can you, like, can you afford it? it? What, number like, one, can you decay. afford it? Like realistically, like, we, we like take be it. realistic with yourself. Sometimes you actually can, if you just pull from like maybe some of the other stuff you're spending on and do it. And you're like, oh, yeah. I actually can if I just tighten up here and I shift yeah. over here. But they're just um, and jumping. sometimes you just shouldn't. And that's yep. okay too. You like do it at your own pace when you can. You but know? some of them are Everybody. just jumping into it and blowing. I got the savings right. account. And I, Absolutely. It gives me the I, shakes, you know, like wait till you're at a point where this isn't going to be so detrimental. Absolutely. So that's, that was a part of the process as well. Like, mm -hmm. you know, go through it down the list. See, is it going to really benefit you? Yep. Are you going to absolutely use it? Is it going to provide the quality that you need? Like, yeah. and you just kind of go down your checklist and, uh, figure out what, what works best. And you could have but a I big learning curve. And there could be a big learning curve with it too. People don't realize yeah. somebody's new equipment oh, can take sure. two, three months to get used to. It can actually make you look worse than the initial part, you know, because sure. you know, I had a six, I had this Sony a 6,000 before right. we got together. And I, I remember, um, I got, I got a great deal on it though. I got like a, like a used box slash sale. Like it was awesome. So I got it really cheap, but I also didn't realize how important the lens was because I was new to all this. Right. So I was like using the yeah, stock like lens. The lens. I didn't know the settings. I ended up selling it to a friend and the first thing i told him was like if you're gonna buy this invest in a good lens <laughs> like yeah. at least just one that is gonna serve the purpose for what you need yeah, yeah. i'm still um, shooting with sony a6, yeah, a6 i bought it for a wedding in 2014 yeah. she's still with it solid yeah, yeah, yeah i think if you just camera. pair it with the right lens and it works yep. great for what yep. you need i just wish i'd have known how to yeah obviously I, he taught me all that stuff later eventually i sold it because we had already you know we yeah. had two cameras and we just didn't need it but um, right. that's another thing if you have extra gear lying around that you just don't need like it holds it value very well you yeah. can get a lot for it really <laughs> don't be afraid to part sometimes selling one piece of gear helps us get something else we really yeah need, and actually you know? the lenses especially if their quality are it's like putting money in the bank yeah mm -hmm. lenses will never their resale on lenses is fantastic yeah, it is it is uh in some cases it can go up Yep. price if, if it's a limited edition lens or a That's vintage right. lens that has a, you know that aren't they don't have very many copies of life of vicky says youtube life is hard and it's true. oh it's absolutely I hard yeah. That, I, yeah. Margo was making fun of me because on no small creators i actually posted about being on here 
and my post was, hey guys, we're gonna be on this amazing podcast to talk about how much YouTube sucks. No, you didn't say it like that. But it was about like how hard it is, and like, and I also wrote, I, it's funny because. He's got the dark sense of humor, and I'm always like the, the chipper one. So I come in, and I'm just like, and fulfilling and rewarding. <laughs> and, and, and he was like, yes, of course. I was only kidding. But, oh, but yeah, it. it's so funny because, um, yeah, I, I, I get it. And I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. I can relate to your feeling, and I'm sure many of us can, Vicky. Um, yeah. But I think it, it goes back to when, A, you're building anything. Yeah any brand any business any yeah. startup anything that you're starting from scratch is always going to be super tough that's tough. your own that you're the boss of um and i think creatively speaking yeah finding that right little kind of niche in an oversaturated market mm. as yeah. a creator in any yeah. field yeah i mean that was always is our, tough, like just you know? to give a little bit of insight and i know it's getting late people probably just want to <laughs> they're probably tired of us but, no. but if i could just give one little bit of insight our idea was always like hey you know, I know my channel is very niche, but niche channels have a potential to grow very quickly, very, they very do. early because they're so specific. You can go to a specific place. You can go to the Reddit pages. You can go to the Facebook groups. You can pull audience from those places. And thanks to that, I've gotten to, you know, 4,500 subscribers in a year. Whereas I knew her channel had a much broader appeal so and, a, and a much yeah. greater potential but a much slower growth because it was such a saturated field. YouTube comedy is so saturated yeah. uh, that we knew that it would be a longer challenge for us. So our business model has been build the gentleman weight brand to the point where it can sustain hopefully, and we can do this full time and then it'll hopefully really take off and really, you know, grow. Yeah. I like uh, Karen's is the key is to love what you do first. So it's not, it doesn't feel yeah, as hard. Exactly. And that's true. I think, yeah. Um, you have, trying to enjoy the process. It's kind of like the, the cliche of, you know, try to enjoy the journey. And you have to believe in what you do. You really have to yeah. believe in what you do. Because people if will you, see it. If you're really loving the process, like as you can see from our bloopers, like as much as it, it's tough and we've had, you know, nights where we've mm. <laughs> cried from exhaustion, <laughs> like, yeah. how are we doing this right now? I can't keep going. Like, um, we also have a lot of laughs yeah. and, you know, I just, it, we try to just like really enjoy every episode and do stuff that we think we're proud of yeah. um, and kind of make that all feel less <laughs> exhausting that way. That's the motivator. And I like what you guys said about the niche versus the norm and that what you guys just said is so true and very well said. And that's an important thing for everybody to realize that, you know, that you, you, you summed it up very well. And for us with live streams, because they're a new thing on YouTube, it's kind of the Wild West all over again. Sure. We've had yeah. to do it a lot because the word got out that, it's, oh, it's a great way to build watch time. So everybody's just clicking on a phone. And, you know, to really make it stand out and put quality into it has been a real uphill battle, you know, like a, sure. to separate yourself from Yeah, that. because for us, it's our content. It's, it's yeah. uh, That's our format. It's, it's our not interviews. the watch time thing. It's no. our format. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's different. Because it's uh, great to talk about it. It's a good conversation. Well, it is because we get a lot of now the cell phone and that, and you can tell they're doing it because they're going to get their watch <laughs> time up. And yeah, I'm here. And yeah, oh uh, hey, the live stream. Right. Hey, yeah, we chatted about Johnny that. Johnny twenty two. Yeah, I'm looking at a wall, and you know it's this, and it's like yeah. there's no effort into it, so it's hard to stand out as pro like nobody's ready to almost take it seriously at first now, which is sure. hard because we do a lot of very professional cinematography. But going into this yeah, as a whole new realm to build your, you know, to build up some reputation as a quality show. So it's tough. Guess, yeah, it's guests it's... like you guys have helped us. So that's. A... Oh. Yeah. Dude, well, thank you guys again. Actually, I wanted to. Um, I'm reading some of that. Can we do some of the, the questions? Is that yes, of guys? course. Uh, well, we answered some of them kind of briefly. Just people fall asleep on us. No. no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, so we answered a couple of them already, which uh, Karen asked as well about your goals on YouTube and uh, kind of some of them got answered as we were talking. Uh, there was a question uh, about um, uh, what is the name the gentleman wake? Uh, what does it mean? Oh, Where did it come from? Um, Tony's reviews asked. It. Well, the name wake, I just always I used it. I used to use it uh, as part of my I'll give you a little hint for your research <laughs> part of my music project uh a decade ago the word wake was in that music project uh name so to speak and i i kind of liked it i thought it was it's like it's easy people get it it was like an understandable thing it's like it, it wasn't they didn't have to work hard wake is like an easy kind of word to say 
um, unless you're speaking to somebody in Spanish and then they're like, wake it, wake it, wake it. <laughs> right, I'm like, wake <laughs> Anyway, and the gentleman part, um, a year before doing um, this content, I, I started another YouTube channel. I got up to about, I don't know, uh, I think I got up to like 1,200 subscribers or something. And, and it was a video game based stuff because I like playing video games. And um, the name of that channel was G The Gentleman Gamer. Uh, Gentleman Gamer TV, and I did like map guides and map reviews or whatever. Oh. And so I come when the time came to start a new channel. I kind of liked the idea of, you know, Gentleman Gamer was kind of was kind of uh, non-specific, like it could be anybody. Mm -hmm. But Gentleman Wake was like a person, was like an entity or an identity. So that's how that's where it came from, and it just sounds good. <laughs> it does. Like, it yeah. does. It I does. like the sound. Uh, I I feel like it's it stands out. You know. He also felt like the gentleman wake was someone who could exist within his his within the niche, study right? study yeah. space that he'd created his yeah. <laughs> his Sherlock Holmes esque uh, study. Space. And what's interesting is that you know, and I think that that it it def the name does a lot for the brand, right? Because. The word gentleman kind of creates a sense of like you know sophistication, and I'm I'm not a really sophisticated person in that respect, but you know I I feel like that's one of the things that that I I like about the brand, mm -hmm. that it feels like it could be sophisticated. Yeah, and I think um, you know, to to maybe a certain type of collector who feels like they identify with all of those things, maybe for right. like the cart yeah. collecting with like right. a sipping little cognac in his study, like it's like it it sets a scene. I think it creates a mood. It sure. does. It, it tells sure. a story, definitely. Even behind the videos, <laughs> kind of what is going on behind the scenes, you know, as this entity well, li what's lives. Is, so is, to is, say. Yeah, and it's an identity, right? Because it's like I'm Omar, but yes, the gentleman wake is an identity, you know. And it's I think it's good, you know. I know some people, some creators don't believe that. Casey Nice, that Peter McKinnon, they all use their real names. I use her. And <laughs> well, you use a pseudonym. Well, right? uh, not, well, Quinn not, is Quinn's a pseudonym in the sense that it's a nickname. But it's a stage right, name, right. ultimately. It's sure, not, right, it's right. It's not like your real name. And but I, I think mean, that it's like there's closer a distinction. Than, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a distinction there that I like to keep. Not because I want to be anonymous, because I don't really care, <laughs> but I just, it's just to me the, the idea of the brand being its own thing. Yeah, I'm open about the fact that my last name's Quintana. It's not right. like a secret. <laughs> right. I don't hide it or anything. I, I love it. I just had to read this because it was in all caps. Right. I just laughed my ass off over <laughs> Eliza's channel. I love. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Dangerous, Dangerous criminals. criminals. Mm. Oh, I love that. We love. Cr we love. Mysterious uh, name. Criminal. Uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Shows. Like, shows investigation. about like investigative yeah, investigative shows. Oh yeah, there's I'm lots of that there. Over to your channel. Like, yeah, Let's see what it's I about. <laughs> she, she's well, I don't know if it's like a band name, but that's super cool. Yeah, no, uh, she does. Thank you. That means a lot. That's she does awesome. cover that side as well, and plus yeah. she does live streams and everything. So yeah. Oh, awesome! Yeah. Oh, I'm cool. gonna check it out. Absolutely, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, I saw somebody say that they like my honest deck reviews. Steve <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Thank you very much, Steve, for watching. I appreciate oh, that. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you guys heading over to check it out. Uh, yeah. We also had at the beginning of the chat when we just posted the link, uh, there was a channel, uh, Furukiyama. Uh, Zero uh -huh. zero. He said uh, this Baruch. video. Yeah, he said that's one of our boys. He's a regular. Yeah. <laughs> he said this video will start when I'm long asleep. In case you read this, just came to say hi to gentleman wake uh, and lady wake. I'm yeah. he, I'm he's their right. subscriber he's, he's from you know, Like one of the things, one of the, the really amazing. <laughs> one of the things, first subscribers. One of the really amazing yeah. things about oh. this journey is like people who become like, I want to say the regular, but that's not the right word. It's like a. It's like almost like the community leader, right? Like right. those are the people that that are a part of your community and they watch everything you post and they're extremely complimentary and yes. effusive in their support. Like that's amazing. Like yeah, I, for, thank you I, for sharing that with us. Yeah. Farouk's actually been wonderful. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I thought it was so sweet to yeah, take was, his yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, there's so people kind. like I mean, Karen has been very much like that for Liza. It's the same kind of idea. It's like those champions are like we need that. Like yep. not just because those people help expose us to other people through word of mouth and through sharing, but because that stuff is fuel, man. Yep. You know, it's fuel it for the keeps fire. Keeps going on those late nights. You yeah. Know? We got some in here right now, like A hey, Joe. There was a guy I was talking about a while ago. He's in here, an amazing blogger. He's been good to us right from the get go. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Karen as well, so like great. introducing us and ch and keeps you know. Yeah. We, Lucky to have the well, people it, we have. It's building the community aspect, yeah. which is something that YouTube does very well. Yeah. yeah. So, 
but you got to harness it, and that's something that's yeah. up to you as the individual, as a host, is to really tap into that and give them, keep them happy, and stuff like sure. that. Sure, sure, you're yeah. absolutely right. Sure. Uh, so, what besides YouTube, of course, what does uh, inspire you uh, to 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 do what you're doing? What are you watching? What are you listening to? What, oh, what like uh, yeah, like other maybe other people that we like to watch. That yeah. Well, um, I mean, I, on the YouTube front, like I'm a I'm a voracious YouTube devourer. Uh, despite the fact that I somehow managed to make as many videos as I do, like I constantly watch it. So, I mean, obviously we talked about Peter McKinnon in in, in the niche that I exist. Uh, uh, Chris Ramsey is a magician and a cardist, and he's you know he does puzzle re reviews and stuff like that. He's great. He's fantastic. Um, you know, outside of that, like, you know, we just talked about Matt D'Alva, who does um, kind of really interesting minimalist content stuff. Uh, we love uh, Leon Lush. We think it's hilarious. hilarious. I don't know if you I guys have... Leon Lush does, like, a form of, like, commentary YouTube where he, like, watches other videos and comments on But it's, on like, it, but different it's because it's the for... funniest guy. It's kind of like he's, like, our age. And yeah. He's, like, <laughs> always kind of self-deprecating. He's so funny. He's it's just great. very funny. Uh, um, a lot of the females, like, I remember Omar Anna had, Akana. had turned me on yeah. to Anna Akana at the beginning. Mm. Um, I think she does some really great stuff. Uh, Joanna um, Hausman. Joanna Hausman. Uh, is this somebody we hope, American from, we hope to work with yeah. in the near future is she's Joanna good. Hausman is one, and, and another one is Jenny, Jenny Lorenzo. Lorenzo who's, a, who's obviously, yeah, she's from Miami as well, out in LA now, and she came up uh, through BuzzFeed and uh, Me Too, which is mm. like a, a Latin, a Latin in, right, sort of a Latin in BuzzFeed um, type of media brand. And uh, she had this breakout character who is a, a Cuban grandmother. Right. Uh, oh. And she's one of those multi characters. She also plays all, other a lot characters, of character, yeah. other characters. So, I, you know, I, I a, have an idea. Where a similar I wanna... upbringing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool. Um, so we, I love, we love to engage. And yes, he has, an, <laughs> we want to do an episode that Omar had this idea for of uh, my Dr. Ramirez character. Her old, like the old Cuban. He's kind of, he wears like a guayabera. Yeah. Everybody knows what that is. It's mm. like a traditional nice. like Cuban, Cuban shirt. shirt. Uh, and he, it, we, we wanted to do this episode where Dr. Ramirez puts out a dating video to, to, to me. get oh, Abuela's, Abuela. her yeah. Abuela character's attention. Kind of like a seniors only oh, dating awesome. service. <laughs> so we're, 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 we're seeing if maybe she'll get a kick out of it. And, oh. uh, Definitely. It sounds like fun. But yeah. that's that's in our plans is to, to see how we can get Dr. Ramirez a date with, <laughs> with Abuela. With Abuela. <laughs> <laughs> Just the grandma, Cuban grandma. Uh, Steve Rogers is asking, did Chris Ramsey ever talk about your review of his first playing cards? Uh, well, no, other than he did leave a comment on the video uh, oh. that he saw it, that he said, he said, that's a great video. That's all he said. So I don't know. I don't even know if he watched it. <laughs> uh, I have plans, however, to get back uh, and collaborate with He's him. He's headed so. for him too. You know, Omar's relentless. Yeah, oh. I'll, get, I'll, I'll <laughs> collaborate with him. Again, I am one degree away now. Like I'm getting starting to get, I'm getting closer, closer and closer. Yeah. So. Oh. so we are sending Omar uh, on a trip across the country next weekend to yeah, do some actually, collabs. Yeah, I, I, if anybody on the channel, it, nobody knows who I'm collaborating with yet, but uh, I'm collaborating with some other YouTubers and I, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, it's his first like kind of hmm. like it's big a, multi. It's He's a big done deal. Some, we have yeah. some, uh, some other big collabs. We have this, uh, for, actually a YouTuber we actually made friends with because right. somebody, uh, um, a, a subscriber on his channel put them together. So like, you got to check out the gentleman way. And he's like, wait a minute, right. this, I know where I've seen this. This guy's from Miami. Right. Like, he looks like he's in Miami. It turns out we're and now he's actually a really good he's friend. A friend of ours. Yeah. <laughs> he's oh. really a friend and one of the few other local creators that we have a connection with. And he was gracious enough uh, to do some collabs with Omar. And um, you know that's been really cool because he he had obviously been on longer and had a lot of growth. Yeah. Uh, so, but but the, this is like also a continuation of that that had been the only other collab, really. I think. Yeah. So this is kind of fun and scary and exciting because we're like yeah. it's the first time we're like, well, yeah. Plus, you know, it's like the timing of like you know the card deck release sometime next month. It's yeah, like, so it's, it's like kind of cool how it all worked the out. Time. That everybody said yeah. yes and everybody was going to be in that region of the country at the same time. So right. uh, cool. it could be something really fun. See what happens. That's, that is awesome. Also, I got to apologize to Six Howards, by the way. My mouse got caught on the side and I accidentally hid you, and then I unhid you right away. So, once again, oh, you, no. you, you've oh, done nothing wrong whatsoever, and I love having it you happens in. happens so. all the yeah, time. So. What do you guys do when you uh, need to wind down, yeah. like uh, today, for example, or any other day when you got busy all through the day? I what mean, do you do? Sleep. 
before sleep? <laughs> I mean, uh, the answers in the first half of that statement, I whine. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I do, but I do enjoy my little wine. Uh, my one glass of red wine gets me settled. Yeah. Um, Winding out, we actually, believe it or not, watch YouTube. Yeah, we watch YouTube. We just... get in our in bed <laughs> before bed, and we put on the Apple TV yeah. and uh, I, watch the honestly YouTube. like. To be honest, and maybe this is a, a fault of ours, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's a, it's, it's a virtue, but we are like no, like we don't get very far away from our goals. Yeah, uh, we don't really like. Uh, yeah, we, we're really any spare time is that. Yeah, we're so very we, we're been very one track minded. Well, well, we will try to. Omar has this thing where he can't just like after creating all day no, get right I into bed to, and fall asleep. I need to watch some TV. So that little moment of like the disconnect is actually watching yeah. YouTube, which yeah. is <laughs> ironic. Um, but I yeah, that's what we do. That's the moment we have to be like the audience and just like consume. We don't even do enjoy. Netflix anymore. We're so YouTube now at this point. Yeah, it was not yeah. it's rare. Like a yeah. couple things that we got into that we'll try to yeah. watch a little bit of. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, we're the same way. <laughs> uh, so Omar, you talked about uh, what what is coming up for you, uh, Liza. Yes. Uh, what is what is your future? brings what the, like what are what are things in the works for yeah. me like yes. what are the plans yeah um so i was like reading stuff at the same time i thought no. uh so the let's see uh plans for for my channel myself in general both yeah okay uh, uh let's see well i definitely like i said i'm trying to see how i can up the output on my channel mm -hmm. um so my i'll be you know focusing my attention on trying to get a little bit more frequent with the content um i would definitely love to do i have more collabs in mind that i'm going to be kind of focusing on and trying to make happen um and i'm also working really hard to work my energy around in a way where i can dedicate more time to mm -hmm. this so i'm trying to see how i can mm -hmm. keep making the steps to make that happen um because i feel like i don't get to really give my channel all the attention I want to, and, and that's oh. my goal, is to get, be able to dive in a little deeper. Mm -hmm. I think so, it's awesome. That's for me. I think you're just on the verge of finding the greatest outlet for your talent you've ever had. I truly believe <laughs> that. I, I, Thanks. Uh, I, it's definitely been a, yeah. a wonderful outlet, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad he convinced me to, uh, to give it a shot. It's been kind of, it's been, I mean, not to sound dramatic, but life changing, really, in yeah. a lot of ways. That's yeah. awesome. You are greatly complimenting each other. Oh, yeah. I, the way you're even oh. talking <laughs> in the Folks, conversation. Folks, you're watching Fate in the Midst right now. Yeah. You really are. Oh, oh. sweet. <laughs> that is awesome, though, and it, it, and it does open up so many chapters. And I think Xenia and I is the same thing. I mean, I looked after YouTube. She looked after Instagram. And since we've come together, it's just changed the whole dynamic. And I couldn't imagine without her. And I think the same can be said with you guys as well. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Fantastic. It's yeah. so funny because I, I often tell people that there was a moment where as as being, in, you know, in entertainment my whole life, you always have this thing where you think if I, if, you know, I don't have time to be dating or partnering or, mm. you know, I got to stay focused on my goals. Right. But I always, I'm so amazed at how much more I've been able to create with, a partner <laughs> you know it's right. most people think it's like this distraction from what you're trying to do and in a lot of ways it's complimenting mm. and true. just adds value and, yeah you know. I, I wouldn't be able to do any of the stuff that i do without her yeah uh we're so it's, it's, we're, yeah we're the right grateful person. for that yeah. i mean we found each other later in life and i think that's why we were so quick to get married so fast yeah. but, <laughs> uh, but it's funny because i think okay all of this kind of led up to now being able to create these things together you know. And it doesn't matter how long, as long as it's right. Why, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, but yeah, it's so it. different. It's so different when you do that that way, you know, yeah. right? Where it's like, man, I, I I, thought I would be better off alone, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I do this on my own, but yeah. it's kind of cool. When you find the right person, you become better together. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. And in, in a lot of ways, you don't have to do the same thing, per se. Yeah. Um, but just kind of carry each other in different ways, yes. you know. Yeah. Definitely. Juggle the, ball, juggle, juggle the balls yeah. around, so to speak. I, I do find you a lot better since we, you met me. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Always digging. <laughs> guys, 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 get a room. Get a room. <laughs> get a room, guys. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh. we're done. We're done. <laughs> Usually Jesus. she 
Usually she, so she does oh, that stuff. Of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Usually she does that kind of stuff, so she's kind of thrown by with me that said yeah, that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I, know. Oh. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. That's wonderful. Oh my god! So. Thank you guys. It's been such an honor. Oh, oh it's man, been it's our been a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for tuning oh. in. Um, I wish I could have gotten to to, to more of the it? questions, but um, oh, I thought we, but definitely we'll we kind of covered guys, everything. Yeah, there's yeah, some yeah, that get no answered. Worry, no, 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 totally. She'll talk and talk and talk. Oh my god! Ah, ah, la, 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 no, no. Ah. What I was gonna say was, let's keep the conversation. Let's work in it, all right. <laughs> let's keep the conversation going on social media. Yes, can, yes. If you guys uh, yes. tweet, obviously. Okay, so I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this right. It's push. Studios, right? Pusha. 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 Yeah. Pusha. Okay. I wasn't sure. I was. I heard. I was like hearing. Oh my God! Karen says it's four where she is. Just let her sleep already, babe. It's four, Karen. Thank you for staying up with me. Oh my goodness. She said this is the first time I've ever made it through. We have one Ah! show out of six that's on the afternoon, and it's because of Karen. (sighs) That we do uh, Thursday afternoons early is because of Karen. Wait, so four p.m. Four a.m. Yeah. Yes, my God, yeah. Karen. Uh, wow. She believes. She, said, she believes in the said, guys. "If I could sing a tad more." Mm. Well, I just missed some birthdays, so just in yeah. case, I'll just say to everybody: Happy birthday to you, everybody who had a birthday. Mm. <laughs> Thank you guys so, 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 so much. Thank you guys so much. So yeah, just. Tweet us, make sure you mention Pusha Studios. Yeah. Um, and just tweet us, and we'll just keep the conversation going. Anything we missed. You guys yeah, are awesome. Just, uh, thank you so thank much you. for having thank us. Thank you so Appreciate much. It. You guys are well. Thank Thanks. you so much for your time. <laughs> it's uh, our pleasure. We'll, t- <laughs> we'll talk soon. Have All a right. great thank night, guys. You. Thank you once again. Too. Bye now. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, my God. You guys are awesome. They are so <laughs> cool. Have a great night. <laughs> They are amazing, uh, yeah, guys. And no. if you missed any of the beginning of the stream, please go back and watch yeah. it. And uh, you can listen to more of yeah. amazing uh, conversation and voice. Uh, and they're great for everybody. Well, hey, Joe's in here and they're still uh, hopefully listening in. I was mentioning you guys got to get to know each other as well. Uh, the shooting integrity and all that. I know. I'm yes. Very impressed. So uh, phenomenal channels, guys. You, If you haven't checked them out already, do you have the links on? Yes. All right. You can just uh, post them in again. Let's get them in for everybody. Uh, yes, of course. And all the social media links are down in the video description, all on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, you can also see a sample of Omar's uh, shorts uh, that he has made. Uh, yes. Uh, promo reels for the shorts uh, that he has been part of. Uh, that's also in VMO. A link down below. So check that all out. Both of them are super talented and they complement each other so well. Yes. Like, I mean, there's a lot of talent there between those two people. <laughs> Like when they asked about keeping together, well, of course we're gonna keep. It. I'm I'm happy they asked us to keep in touch. Yes, of course. Know. And once yeah. again, thank you so much to Karen Somers for this amazing opportunity and suggesting uh, these uh, amazing guys. Uh, thank you so so much. It wouldn't be possible without you, Karen. Yes. And thank you for being a trooper <laughs> and staying up till four o'clock in the morning. We do appreciate it. We really do. Yes. Uh, and thank you for thinking of us again. That was so cool of you. Yeah, uh, thank you. You did not disappoint, and you were absolutely right there. Karen says this was, this was better than I hoped for. What a nice couple they are. Well, uh, I I was sure once uh, it was you that suggested them. I I, yeah. I wasn't questioning it twice. Uh, knew they were a catch, <laughs> and yeah. they truly are. The more you watch them, even guys, you gotta go over and check yes. them out because Have a good night, Karen. I uh, understand completely. Yes, <laughs> uh, they are amazing on their channels. You're gonna get some laugh and 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 lots of quality content as yeah. well. Oh no! Uh, really well done. Yeah. What a what a pleasure to meet. And guys, that's been. If you look at uh, our uh, c- captain uh, was in here, our pilot. Ex- uh, no, c- uh, pilot, pilot. I always mix them up now when I try to call the two our, our guests from the other night, which was so cool to have you in here, by the way. Yes. And Ryan and we've been trying so hard on these interviews this season to really reach outside the box. And introduce everybody to a whole new world of creators out there with so many interesting things going on. Oh, there we go. And just close that by accident. If you didn't have a chance to go over our previous interviews, I would truly suggest to check out who did we have. uh, A lot of amazing uh, variety of creators out there. Yes. There is a link uh, up there in the corner. And I put it in the chat as well for all our playlist for the Tube Life Season 2. Stacey Morgan, how are you? Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, guys, there's so many people there to see. and uh, They're just 
definitely another one in that list of just amazing people that are doing amazing things on this platform. That's right. And tomorrow is Tuesday Tech Talk, uh, three hours of YouTubers Think Tank, where we all Thank have you, questions and we all have answers. And uh, uh, it's an amazing opportunity to kind of mix together and get those questions answered. And Wednesday, Wednesday, we're going to have Tokyo Drew joining us uh, from Japan. That's right. Uh, he's a Canadian, uh, actually from Toronto, but uh, he's been living for decades in Tokyo. So we're going to talk about that and about cultural differences and uh, how does it feel like uh, being on the other side of the planet Yeah. Uh, and uh, adjusting to the new lifestyle. So that's on Wednesday, guys, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. As always, all our schedule is in the video description and our about section. Thank you so much for watching us today. Uh, if you can uh, spare a minute of your time, please come back and leave a comment. We do appreciate if you do. It helps a lot, guys. And please make sure to follow our guests. They're destined for yes. great things. And uh, you want it's always great when you can catch somebody on the rise like that. Uh, like his, where I just got to say before we leave, like the, his, 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 his cinematography is just brilliant. I love it. I really do. But. Uh, so I, I just can't say enough good things about it. I'm just blown away. I mean, these, the, the intro is just great. I just kept watching it's like it. watching a movie yeah. because he is cinematographer. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's really, he is. He, I, I, uh, the one question I didn't ask, and I should ask it on social media, is uh, when is his full feature film coming up? Yes. Because I think there should be one somewhere in the future there. Most definitely. <laughs> definitely. Most uh, and I will have to ask that on the social media, guys. <laughs> yes, we're going to try and talk tomorrow about homepage setup. Uh, thank you yeah. so much for reminding that, Theoretical Pops, and any other questions, of course, as well. Thank you yeah. so much. Guys, thank you once again. It's been such a pleasure hanging with you. Uh, if you guys can, just uh, tonight, just check out one of our cinematics. It really does help us out a lot. Um, leave a comment. Uh, see some of the other stuff, especially some of the ones that have joined us more recently. Haven't had a chance to see. There's lots to pick from. And I'm going to put the link in oh, the chat, guys. You. Uh, if you want to uh, check that out, leave a comment. Uh, hashtag push a love. Yes. <laughs> That's what we do here. That's right. <laughs> uh, if you go uh, and check it out from this stream, uh, thank you so much. And, guys, we'll see you. Not even 24 hours from now, we'll be back on with Tech Talk Tuesday. Looking forward to hanging out with all you guys. That's our favorite night of the week because we just get to interact with you guys directly for three hours feeling all your questions, learning from you guys. You're absolutely awesome. Theoretical Pops, Izzy Fam, uh, Timmy Turner, Chris's World. Uh, Oswald just Lele. came in. Oswald, how are you, my friend? Great to see you. Hey, Joe, it's so great having you in here. Bucks Wild, uh, Centroid Aerial Images, Jason NG, the Creator Spotlight, each and every one of you, Karen Somers, who's just gone to bed. And if we missed it, Stacey Morgan as well, the Dustin Carell, Longo Show. Course. Terrell, we owe everything to. Guys, if you haven't checked out Terrell's artwork channel, the original wrench, and has been so good to us. We could never, ever have done all this without him. And our music here is provided by MU Free Music yeah. for your videos. Uh, the link is in the chat and the description. Go check it out. And if you need of new audio files. Philip Cockram's in the house. Philip is here, one of our originals right from the get-go. Great to see you, my friend. Always such a pleasure. Blessings to you as well. And also Eric Garcia, Chris's World, Nomadic Bike. You guys are awesome. I will uh, I will we'll show us what to do step by step. We'll we'll work it out step by step. We'll, we'll try out. as yeah. much as possible step yeah. by step. Thank you. Yes, no problem. Try to make it as uh, much as Thank you so much for putting it on Instagram, by the way. Thank you. Very cool, guys. We appreciate all the input. We're all a team here. Blue Wrench is all in one roof, guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a great night, guys, and uh, see you tomorrow. Be well. Bye now.